Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Gameformer Show. I'm your host, Ben Hansen. I'm joined by the great Andrew Reiner. Oh, what a sweet thing to say. You're looking so nice. And Elise Favis herself. Hey, hey. It's a real honor to have you. And then, in the third oh seat, this week, oh, no. we have... <laughs> what, what did I sign none up for? Than one of the greatest Game of Former editors oh. of all time. Oh, one of the greatest editors... I've ever seen. Oh man. Legendary. Oh, this is back to my sports days. Am I gonna come running out? The K Star Killer. <laughs> we got the blonde bombshell herself. Oh man, oh wow. The Wallopin Wallace. I was not prepared for this. Wallopin you guys are to. ready. Oh. Kim Wallace is here. Yes. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> Probably not. I don't Probably, know. Probably I don't know. But it's been a while. Chicago. That that yeah, Chicago, there you go. So Technically, this is the first podcast we've recorded in 2017. The last one was a weird split. We recorded part of it in 2016. So with the first first podcast out of the gate, we should focus on the year to come. Yeah. Uh, last podcast, we broke down our favorite games of 2016. Mm-hmm. And this is a, it's a little bit of a dry spell well, in games, right? 2016's over. We need to move on, right? We need to move on. And some small things have already happened, like Gravity Rush 2 is out. Yes. On yeah. PS4, Serial likes it. So it's better than the first, but it's mm-hmm. not amazing. I think you give it a 7.5. We might talk about it in the future. Kim, I guess you reviewed Walking Dead season three. Oh yeah, no, that was like right before break. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. it was it was a good start. Um, okay. Interesting to see what they do with it. We'll see. Two episodes it, out yeah. right now, right? Oh One. really? Well, I thought it was. Yeah, uh, well, it was a two. It was a two parter. I guess it. Yeah, it was the opener was two episodes. You're correct. Um, interesting. So they're considering that both. Like episode one and two. I guess. I think so. I don't know. Um, Okay. That's confusing. But what we're doing in this episode is we're going to be breaking down the top five games that we're most excited about. We did this last year as well. I think it works well. It's a nice refresher of what does this year actually look like? We don't know so many things. Mm -hmm. If you look at like the release calendar, the back half of 2017 Mm -hmm. is a dust bowl. Uh, But some things are going to get slotted in. There's going to be some surprises along the way. But starting Mm -hmm. out. Yeah. Not knowing too much, we're just going to run down our top five most anticipated games of 2017. Andrew Reiner, yes. your fifth most anticipated game of 2017. I'm putting two games in this spot. Oh, he's already cheating. This is nonsense. <laughs> they better be a Pokemon tandem. <laughs> Assassin's Creed. Oh. oh. Black Flag. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's a call, uh, dumb callback joke. Uh, Assassin's Creed, whatever that ends up being, because mm-hmm. they skipped a year. Yeah. There's rumors of Egypt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to see what a lengthy development cycle for Assassin's Creed is like I'm excited about that I am too and then the other one that hasn't been it has been announced but it hasn't there's no details yet is Star Wars Battlefront 2 Oh, you literally is. are just throwing in two right now. Yeah, I told yeah. you he's cheating. <laughs> yeah, so God. I'm putting okay. both of those in that spot of we don't know anything about them but mm-hmm. if they put a campaign in Battlefront that's exactly what we want. Seems like Their gameplay was solid, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was tight and uh, I liked playing it. It just didn't have a lot of content so if they can fix those you know Address people's complaints and their wishes. Give a campaign, more maps, more ver- variety in those in the the multiplayer. That'll be great. And then Assassin's Creed. I can't wait to see what. Right. That is. I know you better than I know my family. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> and there's no way that you're more excited about Assassin's Creed than a new Star Wars game. So you should just say Star Wars Battlefront. I'm putting both of them right now. <gasps> Although I, I only say, wrote Star Wars Battlefront. I I complain <laughs> so much about the yearly cycle of Assassin's Creed, but I actually missed playing one this See? year. You know, so I'm like ready. I liked that I, I had mean, a year I, off. I, I think I'll I really one. enjoyed Syndicate. Mm-hmm. Like I felt that was such a step up from Unity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'd be curious with the longer development cycle. Yeah. yeah. It's really strange that Rogue still hasn't been ported to this generation. Yeah, that right? is really weird. That is on. What the hell's going on here? Last year know. was a perfect year to do they it. They should do that because yeah. I would mm-hmm. play the hell out of that. Because Black Flag was awesome. Rogue was actually pretty Black. pretty good. I played it. Yeah. Liked it. Yeah. Oh, right. On. I liked it more than I thought I was going to. So, Reiner, lay out the dream campaign for Battlefront Two. What do you want in a post Rogue One world? Oh, I boy. want it to be new universe. A side chapter off of Ray and Finn oh, and Poe's yes. story. Let, like, let me let me pause yeah. it. Do they call that new universe? I was thinking, do they call it sequel trilogy? What is the official terminology for what <laughs> I think this we just is? call it new universe at this point. New yeah, universe. New okay. timeline, whatever. Huh. But um, yeah, I want that. And the concept art that was in the E3 video actually showed, you know, the people working on the, the team working on the game concept art. They showed a TIE, fire, TIE fighter flying in and it had the red streak on it. So I thought that was a telltale sign that that was new universe. So yeah. that would be awesome. Yeah, you'd think so. So you want new story in the new universe. Yep. Nothing you don't want the adventures of Finn or anything. We've done classic to death. Let's yeah. let's move on. Get past Hoth and all that crap. Let's hmm. do new stuff. Yeah, that'll be interesting. It seems like 
peak of the new trilogy in theory if episode eight comes out in December, which I can't imagine it'd be yeah. delayed. They'll at this probably point. have a map from episode eight or two. That seems like but a yeah, safe do bet. a side story. Yeah, hell yeah. Why not? Aaron. Great choice. Thank Elise. You. Okay, my number five is Thimbleweed Park. What? All right, this yeah! is why we brought Elise. Yeah! Here we go. So, Let's do it. Is that a fake yeah, thing? <laughs> uh, yeah, so Ron, Bo- Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick are back at it, and those are the two guys that were behind Maniac Mansion. And as a lot of you know, I really like adventure games, especially the old uh, LucasArts stuff. So I really look forward to see what, they're going to do now with this. Now, you, you demoed and this at shows, right? I and did. thought it demoed really well, I, right? I did. I played it at E3. It was like 20 minutes, maybe, mm-hmm. and it was like near the opening. And so basically, uh, you play as, as, I don't know how many, but you, you switch between multiple characters. Mm-hmm. And you start off as like two FBI agents, and you're like checking out this corpse that you find out underneath the bridge. And yeah. then you're meeting all these really weird people in this yes. strange town. Sounds and great. it's kind of like Twin Peaks vibe in yes. a way. And super weird, funny humor. And not to tear you two apart, but I think, if I know correctly, Kim, you're a Maniac Mansion person, Mm -hmm. and I think, Elise, you're more of a Maniac Mansion 2 Day of the Tentacle person, right? If you had to choose... I love Day of the Tentacle, yeah. That's probably my my top one. Have one you pl- of the t- well, actually, that's not true. I mean, <laughs> if we're talking about all of like LucasArts stuff, then it's probably Grim Fandango. That's, oh, okay. Wow. That's yeah, I'm, I'm Maniac Mansion all but, the way. Um, yeah. Day of the Tentacle, I really like. And actually, I would say, from what I played of Thimbleweed Park, it reminds me most of Day of the Tentacle, just in the sense that like narrative kind of took a backseat and felt more like a backdrop for the jokes. Like it was very humorous and that was mm-hmm. the thing that I felt most about it. I hope it's I easy. I liked that. <laughs> and well, I mean, I th- from what I understand is they are trying to make it less obtuse mm-hmm. than the older stuff. Yeah, we talked so. to Ron a little bit about it uh, months ago, I guess, on this mm-hmm. podcast about the development of that game and whatnot. Right. But yeah, do you know when that's coming in 2017? I don't know when. I don't okay. think they have a date confirmed yet. Also this year, on that note, I hope I'm not stealing anybody's Full throttle. thunder. Full throttle remastered. I also you... I didn't put that on my list because I'm like a remaster. That's stupid to put on a <laughs> that's <stupid>. anticipated, <laughs> <laughs> anticipated uh, list because you know. Uh, but yeah, I love Full Throttle. As I well, never played so. Full Throttle. I haven't so either. I'm it is super incredibly excited. obtuse, though. Oh, sh- so uh, <laughs> well. I'm just saying, but it's it's a good story, and I really enjoyed the setup of that. When it comes out, can Kim and I uh, go over to your apartment and play through the entire thing with you? <laughs> yeah, think... can you just tell us the answer? <laughs> that's all we want. Exactly. I'm not going to sit down by myself right. realistically and like walk that. through my way yeah. through it. But like in a group setting, it's also supposed to be really short. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that would be cool. Yeah. Okay. So we can come over. You'll leave the door unlocked? Uh, Hansa, I'll leave the, the, the window un- unlocked. Oh, Peter Pan style. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can see you more in a Peter Pan outfit than <laughs> Batman. Old Batman, our dream <laughs> character. Oh, boy. Kim, number five. Ah, uh, Danganronpa 3. What? Hey, yeah. Oh. I'm well, excited for that. That's been a big buildup, actually. Is that the they... Bear with the Belly Button yes, series? Yes, okay. Yes. Your, fa- your favorite. <laughs> with, the, with the weird voice. Uh, oh. Monokuma. But actually, there's been a long lead up to this. Uh, they had launched the anime this year. Um, right. Or last year, I guess I should say, now that we're in 2017. Uh, that kind of filled in some holes in the story. So I've been watching that. Um, getting really into certain things I didn't know with characters. I won't spoil anything. So I'm excited to see the third game. It has a female protagonist, which I think is cool because that's the is the lead because that's the first time. And yeah, this game, Danganronpa is all about people killing each it's other anime to song, try to get yeah, right? yeah exactly. And it's just never really it, demented. Is and, it connected to the uh, 999 Richard's Last Reward no, series? No, no, that's they're so confused because they're both about. The, weird torture chambers, right? Yeah. <laughs> they they have similar premises, but that's that's yeah. completely different. Okay. Yeah, it's just silly and demented, and um, has really good twists as you go on with it. So, as somebody who's been following, like I said, the game now in this universe, to see that final third game is going to be really exciting. Now, that bear with the erect belly button is <laughs> that erect. is that thing going to be back? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Um, what they about, can't get rid of Monokuma, uh, regardless of who is behind Monokuma. They can't get rid is, of him. He is so twisted. Yeah. What are these games? Is it just a turn-based JRPG? No, no. no it's, oh. it's a visual, visual novel. novel. Oh, so it's very much like. So it's visual novel with like choice. court investigate like trials. So you're doing a little bit in the way of um, it, mini games during I the guess court it's interrogations. It's kind of like Virtue's Last Reward and Phoenix Wright put yeah. together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is it going to be conceivable to jump into the third one? 
no, you should probably play the entire let's play the first and the, they actually the first and the second are coming out on PS4. Yeah, oh, is that right? So I'm excited about that to, actually. Yeah, I'm really, really refresh. I even that. might refresh myself on stuff on the story because even watching the anime, I'm like, oh man, I forgot about that. But then like you start jogging your your memory and you're like, oh yeah, that, that was a really cool connection. So I bet there's more that I didn't pick up on. Um, so I recommend don't don't skip around like obviously I haven't played the third game to know but I would think you'd miss out on a lot of the story if you missed mm. those first two yeah. games but probably some of my um, favorite like visual novel adventures I've had in a while I would even put that like Zero Time Dilemma is just crazy and insane but Danganronpa has this like twisted appeal in a way that that doesn't with also some good humor mm -hmm. and just I like the character interactions with it a little bit better I'm yeah. trying to trace back like the visual novel Esque game. I know, you know, roots of gaming, it's all over the place. But as far as like modern revival, do you think it starts with Hotel Dusk? That's on what I was, DS? Gonna, I was actually going to bring yeah. that yeah. up. Yeah. Mm. Japan was like dating Sims. Yeah. I, it's probably never so. died in Japan. But it was I feel really like... that Nintendo DS that kind of brought it yeah, cause here in, in America. I think, I'm thinking of 999 popular. too. That was. 99 um, Trace Memory was on there. I remember was, that right. it was all those Smasher? early. Yeah, but that that was so long ago. But that was Hideo Kojima, Kojima. Yeah, for on sure. Sega CD. It's a game that we've been talking about we got going back to again and again and again. But, you know, I think it might be a... What was that Super Replay did with JV? Tex oh, Murphy. Tex Murphy. Oh, I think it might be a Tex Murphy situation Oof. where occasionally we can geek out about Kojima and then a long periods of, oh boy, how does this oh, work? Oh, man. That's yeah. a bad memory. Well, that's exciting, Kim. I'm glad you're excited for it. Thank you. <laughs> that's why you're here. I I'm love out it. of the gate. All right. Number five for me might be sacrilegious oh, to God, Kim. Oh, God. Uh, number five, Horizon Zero Dawn. What? Hey, that was my number four. Of course. That was also my number four. My Whoa. number three. Whoa. I, I think this game is really going to blow people away. I mean, it's it's the cliche storyline right when they announce it, uh, being like, okay, kills on creators. Let's finally see what they can do. Mm -hmm. It's such right. a talented team. It's a really good chance for them to blow people away. I think there's a very, very good chance this is going to be one of the most promising games. Of the I year. do too. I hope so. A redhead hunting dinobots. What the hell? I guess. Come on. I what? mean, I I have never played the Killzone series, so I don't have any background in that sense. But like, I don't know. I'm almost kind of worried that this is their first RPG, and I'm like, really hope it works out. But I don't know. Yeah, Kim, are you worried about anything with that game? I we went on the cover story trip, and I had this like, oh, I'm gonna find something here to really like make me worried. I didn't find anything to worry about per se. I wonder how interesting all the stuff in the world is gonna be, but mm -hmm. I feel like they're putting more into the story than I thought they were. And I think yeah. the idea of like talking, learning about all the tribes throughout the game yeah. is really interesting. And plus, like the combat is just insane. <laughs> and like I like all the the stuff that you kind of unlock as you go on with different like traps and how you can kind of. It just seemed like it had so much um, flexibility in how you want to play. And, and take it feels down so things. tight to yeah, control, too. Like, exactly. I remember and you were saying it, it's a very true point that you pick up the controller and it's like, well, every button is mapped exactly how it's expected to be. I feel like yeah. I've played this game before. It's just so perfect. Yeah. I I hope it's like there's nothing that I don't know about that makes yeah. that game. But the, the whole thing of the story being a mystery, I'm super intrigued by mm -hmm. in that the newest trailer they showed at playstation experience where it kind of went in the underground i didn't even yeah. think about them exploring like caves and all that stuff so it's like yeah oh, god what could be done that's there? why i said every time we see something new from that game i'm like oh man I that mean, looks it, really cool that's a new surprise really, yeah. it looks really neat like i think it's probably my top setting of like 2017 i oh, think yeah. people are just worried being like oh you're you're like as elise said you're making this move to an rpg um kill zone has had such its it's ups and downs. Um, but I think, I know when me and Hanson were at that studio, they just seem so enthusiastic to be working on an RPG. And like a That's lot of neat. them were RPG fans as well going into it and have kind of taken. But just like I said, everything we had there, I'm excited. I'm excited to learn more of um, Aloy as a character and what, what goes on there. So I think it has lots of potential. I think I'm hoping it, you know, ends up being on my, you know, game of the year list next year. Yeah. But yeah. Did you get to, like, do any huge, like, grandiose battles against, like, the big dinosaurs? Like Not the Thunderjaw, no. which is, like, the T-Rex, okay. but there's yeah. kind of, like, a saber tooth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, is it at gun. all, like, Shadow of the Colossus-y in a way at all? Or? I didn't get that vibe from Well, it. you know, in the, tr in the video there were released after a that's cover right. story trip where you're climbing, climbing a tall yeah, map. That kind of definitely yeah, gave that vibe. But yeah, wondering. we didn't get to see any of that um, yeah. when we when we played. So mm. The one thing I was worried about on that cover story trip uh, was that Kim would never want to go back to the hotel and would just want to wander around the red light district at five in the morning <laughs> as wow. I was constantly pulling on your shirt. Let's go back. Let's you're go home. How many times are you in Amsterdam? 
I just wanted to. I don't need to see the sunrise. Oh, well, you know. <laughs> Great time. Live it up, man. Live yeah, that's true. I'm a little, I, I'm really excited for that setting. I think the text is going to be amazing. I think it's going to play really well. It certainly looks like it's going to. I'm not fully sold on the storytelling of that game yet. Every time I hear like extended dialogue, it's like, well, I don't know about this. Uh, that's the thing I'm most, in- like above the dinosaurs, I'm most intrigued by that. And I think there's like, remember that game Enslaved? Yeah, Very much yeah. So, yeah. Where it's right. like, okay, destroyed world. There's these robots. There's a big mystery behind it. And you're like, yeah, this sounds cool. A big mystery you're gonna that's going to unfold. And then they're like, and then you play as a character named Monkey. And you're like, what? And they're like, but I'm the monkey is they've... actually Andy Circus, you know, <laughs> yeah. the guy who plays monkeys in movies. And I was like, what? Yeah. Uh-huh. And then you play that game and they're like, the big reveal was live action Andy Circus. The ending, uh, I think it's okay to spoil Enslaved. You I just look, did. Yeah, you should look up the ending to Enslaved. It is the weirdest thing. Because it's just you're sitting in a room and a projector turns on and Andy Circus himself it's explains It's fake Andy Circus yeah. looking at real Andy Circus. <laughs> it's awesome. I mean, my biggest worry with Horizon is they've built up this mystery and wanting to keep it such a secret and whatever that part of me is like, ah, I have a feeling it might, it could go in that disappointing direction, you know, not being as like that exciting or as, you know, fulfilling as they've made it out. You're worried that like they're going to reveal the secret and it's going to be lame? Dumb. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or be like, oh, okay, that's that's what I spent all this time <laughs> searching for. Right. But so. the big thing, new IP. Yes. I mean, yeah. I think that's, yes. I mean, I, I'm new looking experiences. forward to yes. just something super fresh. Right? Yeah, yeah so. exactly. Yeah, got to give credit to Sony for funding such an insane idea. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> Reiner, number four. Scalebound. I cannot wait to Whoa! play this game. Speaking of funding, an insane idea. Co-op, dragons. It's going to be off the hook. No, okay, uh, that game got canceled. But it but is. We should, we should talk about it. It is in my kind of overflow section here. I think that game looked interesting. So it's Platinum. Yeah. Uh, Kamiya's the director from Devil May Cry fame. Mm-hmm. Um, Bayonetta, all that stuff. It was interesting. It was a little bit like Microsoft's Horizon Zero Dawn in a way. Uh, yeah, open world RPG. You're fighting dragons. You're listening yeah. to cool. Uh, yeah, J-pop there was always some headphones. stink when you'd watch those trailers. I, mean, was like, I just felt like it, it was, what it is was that? something that was going to resonate well with um, like North American audience per se, because um, it had like a lot of that anime tropey like main character that is that kind guy of was annoying. a tool. They, they were showing yeah. very little of that game though, so I'm not like I saw a bit of it. At, I didn't like it at Gamescom. Yeah, and. Mm-hmm. And I mean, they they just showed like two minute videos of like this is how you can customize yeah. your dragon, and this is fighting a dragon, and like the <laughs> multiplayer never... looked awful too. Like I was just like, I so wish not, they like, wouldn't have tried surprised. that and just focused, maybe just put the scope down a little bit. I think there were some neat ideas there though. But yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, again, is... on, the, on the new IP front, I was excited yeah. to see a Japanese studio funded and swinging big. But yep. mm-hmm. and now it's. It's sad that it's canceled, and yep. now it's just going to move into the realm of legendary games, where everybody that was excited for it will talk about it for years and years. But like, oh, Scalebound, that could have saved this generation yep. of games. Nope. Yeah, Xbox One is dead. Sell your console. Uh, I will buy yours for five dollars. Wow. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All oh. right, what's your number four? Really? Are you ready? Yeah. The Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. There we go. Anuma. What? Now, here's what I want to know: If they just said. New Legend of Zelda coming out in Time 2017. Malice. That's exactly it. like. Time are malice. there de- what details about the game have you? Doesn't matter. Uh, all hot and bothered. Just the name. That's all I care about. <laughs> no, they're doing something new. They're doing open world. Uh, so they are kind of breaking. At least that's what they're saying. Like they're trying something different with Zelda, going larger scale environment. Uh, I'm worried about breakable weapons stuff like that. Oh yeah. I always hate I that in like games. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's the first mod you always see, yeah. like for Skyrim or Fallout. Oh, yeah. Um, I hope Nintendo knows what they're doing in that capacity. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you know that you're not buying like DLC or you know microtransaction what? repair powder. Or I mean, here's mine. the thing: if there's breakable weapons, you need to ha- make sure that there's a lot of weapons that you can pick up along the way that you'd want to like toss aside your other weapon for. I feel like when there's breakable weapons in the game, you don't want to have that weapon that you're super attached to, and then you're yep. like, you never want to pick anything up, and then when it breaks, you're like, God damn it. So <laughs> Nothing but sticks. Gets yeah, us. it's like the Master Sword's made of balsa wood. You know, what's the legacy <laughs> I think that game it? looks super pretty. I think too. it looks I awesome. I like the yeah. art. I like how bright it is. Um, so I played it at E3, Yeah, and you know, watching it, you're like, okay, the density in this open world, we'll see how much stuff there mm-hmm. is to do. But I just went to like one goblin camp, whatever their names are in the Zelda universe, one camp. And Goblin? Maybe, yeah. And I was 
think. sniping them with the arrow, riding my shield down a hill. Like I was like, this is super fun. Like I could really get into this. The controls are more complicated than you'd think. Yep. Yeah. And couple that with just the launch of new Nintendo hardware. I am excited. Which we should point out. This podcast is going live Thursday night. Oh, but yeah. Thursday night, there is a huge Switch reveal. So in a few right, hours right. after listening to this. I'm sure most people Tune in to Game Informer for yeah. Switch coverage. Yeah, That's right. right. Uh, so I and Ben Reeves and Kyle are going to be uh, getting hands on with the Switch. So yeah, in a event. future podcast Very episode, cool. we'll talk all about it and probably have a lot more to say. Yeah. So awesome. again, two picks in one. Yeah. Switch and Breath of the Wild. Boom. Okay. Oh, I like he's going to do two Great. the entire time. I hope so. Why not? There's no rules I here, gotta, boy. I got to think of some stuff then. <laughs> Elise, number four. Well, my number four was Horizon Zero Dawn. All right. Perfect. Uh, but I could talk about something else. No. That, nope. Let's no. keep it rolling. This is, this is the yeah. format. Oh, no. Kim, your number four was also Horizon, right? Yes, it was. Okay. Um, That's all. But I don't like being skipped over. Nope, I think me skipped. and Elise have very similar. Kill her mic. Up. No, no, that's great. We'll get back you to get it. You get two every time. What the heck? You've already cheated. I mean, or at the end, we could we could <laughs> just say, like, these are other things. We're we have to rapid fire yeah. through. All right, all right, fine. But okay, this is, this fine. is a, a sanctified okay, list. Do... Uh, my number four, <laughs> a game that I am really looking forward to. I feel like there's a lot of fans out there that are looking forward to it, but Buzz certainly feels like it could not be lower. South Park, the fractured butthole. Oh, nice yeah. Choice. It's in my overflow. Okay. That is in my yeah. overflow Same. as well. I liked the first game way more than I thought I would. Stick mm-hmm. of Truth mm-hmm. was, I had so much fun. That ended up being really high on my uh, top games. We need more year. comedies like that. It's I the like best that doesn't take it's itself just fun. seriously. Yeah. It's just fun. Best yeah. Paper Mario game since Thousand Year Door. <laughs> yeah. By far. I just replayed it too again before the cover story yeah. trip. It holds up so well. I mean, it's, there, you, it definitely feels like a game that was trimmed and gutted and reworked so much down to the last second. There's so many weird little features where it's like, okay, you do this once and then it's never mentioned again. Mm-hmm. It's an odd flowing game, but the core of it is so good. And if you didn't play that first one, that's coming to new gen. Is it a pre-order bonus or? I'm confused by it. it I think if you pre-order Fractured But Whole, you get it right now, but they're oh, not wow. selling it. That's the way that they explained yeah, it's like it to me. Call of Duty Remastered, but they did that, right? It could be, yeah, yeah a little weird. bit like that it's a really bizarre they're release doing structure that more but. and more with games that like you know the sequels that came out last gen because they didn't they do that too with dishonored if you bought dishonored 2 you got the mm-hmm. definitive edition oh, free yeah. with it yeah i like that actually i like that better than <laughs> in-game bonuses yeah that exactly like i'd rather be able out. to play the game that you know led into what i'm playing now so. especially with backwards compatibility yeah, on Xbox exactly. One, it's so easy just yeah here have the other rainbow sixes go at it but to see trey and matt's take on marvel civil war yeah and that Batman just sounds superman so awesome. it sounds great yeah, yeah i think there's Perfect. gonna be a lot of funny stuff and people aren't really thinking about it enough i think that game's gonna be i a blast think they have play. a pretty good premise for it for sure yeah. but it's, it's this weird feeling though i'm still trying to understand it myself because we did a whole month of coverage and the entire time it's uh myself and kyle and ben reeves actually uh, just being like, hey, why aren't team. people <laughs> checking this out more? Why is there more buzz? Like, we think yeah. this game looks really great. Why aren't people interested in it? And then they released a trailer a couple weeks ago, and just as a test, like a week after the trailer came out, I went and talked to Kyle and Ben. Like, yeah, we didn't watch it. I'm like, yeah, I didn't watch it either. There's just something like it's such a known quantity. <laughs> yeah, you know, I it's gonna like... be South Park RPG. It's gonna be funny. You know, if you're there's buying no that game or not. Too. Too. Exactly. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, it, it's a yeah. weird level it's of like, hype. Like, you know, it's game, gonna but... be good, but it's not like the hype is super crazy. Well, I think too, we have all these other games coming out that are like big guns as we mentioned with new IP like Horizon yeah. that like you're more curious what the heck is that about or like right. as you said There's you know it's South Park it. what you're getting mm-hmm. um, which is great but yeah. you don't feel the need like you have to watch every little reveal on it yeah for sure Reiner number three I already said it Horizon Zero Dawn love it oh. Elise number three Ooh, Persona 5 that is my number two what is, what oh is wow that? awesome boom 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 yeah. when is that coming out now uh, uh, March never. okay or is it April Oh, did they go back think, again? Yeah, I think I they think were going like, to be Valentine's Day. And yeah, then Valentine's push... Day to March and then April maybe. And now it's canceled for good. No, no. 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 I'm, already, I'm it's, announcing it here. It's already out It Japan. sucks because in it's Japan canceled. it came out in September and I Nobody was actually, thankfully, uh, in Japan when it released just to kind of see how people... Like and people were like in line for that, and it was it's kind of great to see the enthusiasm still there for really high for Persona. Um, mm-hmm. But that also sucked for North American fans because they thought we were going to get it like around the same time or at least like within two or three months. So it's been a real bummer to have to wait. But um, I played a little bit of the import recently um, for one of our videos and on my grind time column, and 
God, the UI and just whole the interface on that just looks so awesome. Even if I couldn't understand what was going on because I like know like toddler speak of Japanese, it It still looks stylish. Yeah, really stylish and and cool. And um, you know, Persona does characters so well. I'm interested about the social links, how the how the party is. I've tried. As, as big of a Persona fan as I am, I've tried to not see everything because I want some surprises when I play it, you know, finally. Sure. I, I think down. I'm the same way. Yeah. Like, I'm not looking at every single reveal being like, oh, no. And I, there's people some... who have bro- who played the import who have broken down everything. And I'm like, I just, but I, think, I don't need to know. I think in Do particular, people like it? Yes. Mm-hmm. Is it? Where does it compare to like four? Where are they putting it in like, I, the whole I mean, I, it depends who you talk to. Um, but it seems to have... Re- resonated pretty well. I don't know if it'll surpass four, and I have to get four, my own. Four is my favorite. So. Three yeah. is my favorite, but that's just because three's crazy town. Three. That's why three, three is dark. Three is Guns and all that. So three is morose. dark. That's why I like three. Um, you should explain why though. What? Sh- Why it's dark in the guns? How does that work in the game? <laughs> oh my god! It's, it's, it's older. You're, you're not really shooting yourself. You're just getting your persona. Yeah, but it looks like your you're shooting yourself. yourself. And yeah. to like summon in battles, you shoot yourself in the head, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I. I've always wanted to play a Persona game. I'm really excited and for five. And the opening of that game, my God. It's so it's dark. dark. Yeah. So if people are fans of RPGs but have never tried out Persona, if they jump into Persona 5. Oh, yeah, they'll be fine. It, oh, I mean, they're pretty separate from yeah. okay. series. What, what gameplay-wise, you think, what's going to stand out to them? Is it going to be like, oh, my God, this is more blank than I expected? Um, I just think what Persona does so well is how it blends in, like, you know, day-to-day life yep. in with, also, this crazy premise of like shadows and all these, you know, create dungeon crawling and everything else. And I think uh, Persona 5 is interesting because the only thing I worry about localization wise is it deals with a lot of issues facing Japan right now, just in like um, how they're structured with um, their like social system. And like, okay. you know, you're expected to go to work, you're expected to like just the demands of what their society is and within terms of expe- expectations. Not to say America doesn't have that too, but there is more, you know, there's the culture is a little different. And, and they, these characters there. trying to, yeah, break away from that and kind of carve their own path, um, which I hope, like I said, it's set in real world Japan. So it's like uh-huh. you are going to go to like Shibuya and places like that, which is the first time they've actually done real world. Um, I, oh really? In in since um, they had a little bit maybe early in the series, but on, honestly, three and four are set in fictional settings. So this is so the infamous time. second son going oh, to Seattle yeah. situation. Yeah. Okay. I, I think always, Nirvana is going to be in it. <laughs> I think my appeal always has been that like mix of dungeon crawling and day to day stuff, Especially and the social, the social and interactions the social links, make it of course. Too, yeah. But like. I don't know. There's something strangely appealing about yeah. that, like kind of almost like high school simulator. Yeah, it's, the, it's that loop. It's that cool gameplay loop of between all that. I don't know. I, for me, like, there's something about it, and I think I've always been this way that like almost mundane moments in a way are interesting mm-hmm. to me. And like, I'm playing Final Fantasy 15 right now, and everyone complains like, "Oh, the travel's so long," blah blah blah. And I'm like, I kind of like the banter and just like sitting around in the car. When and there is banter. When there is. When, when they do other banter, times, they, they, they do it really book. well. <laughs> when it when it does happen. I, I it, but that, that's the thing so. with Persona, it, just from the outsider perspective, I've always been curious about it, and I never hear people talk about the RPG systems, really, or the dungeons. All I hear is people say, oh my god, are... dating this person is so much fun, this person is so funny, yeah. and I, I'm trying to figure out how, so, is it going to be a grind to get through this mechanically? No, I mean, the dungeon crawling, I'm going to admit, is not my favorite part, but I'm like not in, like, I hate dungeon crawling in general in games because but they've done better with the dungeons having them like theme special themes and stuff to make them cool but what i like in the persona series actually smt in general is like the boss battles are really cool the creations of these these yeah the aesthetics of the bosses you face they always have these warped like you know mix of real world versus monster. It's kind monster. of fun like finding the weaknesses of different Yeah, finding the stuff. weakness is really fun. I I'm curious what new systems kind of, you know, enhance the battle system from what I've seen, but it is basic, you know, turn-based combat. Okay. Um, but also knowing when to exploit weaknesses and Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah. No. Mm-hmm. Uh Kim, number 3. Number three. What did I have as my number three? Oh, Mass Effect Andromeda. Hey, Let's talk whoa, about it. Whoa. I think some other my people number might two. have that on their list. That was my number yeah. one. Whoa. How is that not your number one, Kim? Um, <laughs> well, Persona was my number two, so I think I'm going to shock people with my number one here. It's going to be a real okay. shock. Yeah. All right, Mass Effect Andromeda. We, we've seen a lot of it. Uh, we were on that cover story yes. trip. We saw the first hour and then hours throughout that game and whatnot. Uh, why number three? Why not higher? Why not lower? I'm a little... 
Oh. It's their first the uh, Mass Effect on new gen. I think it's going to be similar to Mass Effect 1 where there are a lot of good things, but it's also like their first go and they're figuring stuff out. And so I feel like things might be a little a little more rocky than I would want. I don't know for sure. I feel like they've kept a lot under wraps with that. So yeah. like even me, I can't really get my head wrapped around the characters or much about the story, which is like, I get it. Um, but my biggest worry <laughs> is more open world is hard to do well. And that's the uh -huh. trend this generation, right? Every game wants to go as big as they can. Mm -hmm. um, but my whole thing is what I found developers are struggling with is having fun things to do within all those spaces and keeping every area you visit distinct and fun in its own right. Do you, so. do you know how open world this is going to be? Because they've been kind of strange. And it's world. not. I wouldn't is call it, like it hubs. You know? Yeah, it's, large hubs. it's like large Dragon hubs. Age Inquisition. Yeah, Dragon kind of Age thing? Inquisition, large hubs with um, less than what Dragon Age had a little too much going on. So okay. they dialed back a little bit within that. I like that loyalty Honestly, missions are back because yeah. characters is actually what they need to focus on, in my opinion, and what they do best. So um, Yeah, I mean, it's... Think about it in terms of, yeah, large hubs, but there's large expanses where they just want you to drive the new Mako around, mm -hmm. which is called a Nomad. So, you know, right. it's a little bit different. It goes a little bit faster than the mm -hmm. horse because there's rocket propellers and whatnot on it. So it's 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 going to be large spaces, but yeah. not entirely huge yeah. over the world. Did yeah. you guys get to see more of the jetpack? It seems fine. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it's there. I mean, it's a jetpack. I mean, it's it's cool. It adds like a you know some some extra options in combat, yeah. but it's not like a game changer or anything. It's a little bit weird. We played multiplayer. Yeah. It's a little bit weird. Uh, just jumping. I think it's automatic when you jump with the jetpack. Then and then you basically do the look down sights equivalent. Mm. Uh, it like automatically will hover you a little bit. So that is a little mm -hmm. bit. It takes some time to get used hmm. to. It's just bizarre in Mass Effect to be hovering in the air for that long. Yeah. Um, so that's that's a little different. I also surprised actually that it's coming out in March. Um, it's so exciting. Yeah, it's it's so soon actually. The, so it I'm just soon. like, I'm excited. I also know that this is you know it's their first go on new gen, and we'll I mean, see we'll see how it turns out. It's I, not Bioware's first rodeo here. Yeah, I mean, well, it's not, but I mean, still them going trying to create these like imagine like the trilogy how linear that was, and now they're trying to kind of go and create these bigger spaces, well, have there, more there, quests. There's a lot of like a blank slate kind of thing yeah. happening right so there's yeah. we'll see like, yeah there's, exactly there's like i'm just saying there's that, risk. but at the same that's time that's what doesn't propel it to like number one for me but it's i i have a feeling i'm going to play the crap out of the game i mean i anyways, i am and, just excited because it's another mass yeah, effect honestly exactly, like that, exactly. that's why it's my number one that's my favorite series of all time so i yeah it is <laughs> i, can't I said it now. is the most important series of the last generation yep. Yep. not just in giving us a great adventure and characters and a new universe mm -hmm. to explore but Connecting those games together, more developers need to do that. It is such a powerful thing. <laughs> so yeah. hard. But also, this thing expanded beyond games, yeah. became this huge multi-entertainment juggernaut like Halo and stuff. We need games to keep growing like that. Like A lot of times, you'll have a game come out and then... That's it. Well, yeah, and I feel like they have a tall order too. You have people who are so attached to that trilogy, tr trilogy and Shepard and those characters, and like, oh, I'm still calling. Be... I'm still calling the character Fem Shep. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's course. happening. Gonna, yeah, I mean, you're gonna go bring into expectations into that game and hoping that like the characters are different and but also you're going to be talking about someone who is like the next you know Garrus to you isn't like that's one of your Garrus. more lovable characters is what I'm saying like that you're going to feel that affinity for oh, yeah. that you did so that's what I'm most looking forward to and I can't get a grasp of that based on like what we saw obviously so and I'm like it's a tough eh. thing to demo yeah. like attachment to characters. Oh, and let's yeah. not forget Dragon Age Inquisition was our game of the year when yeah. that came out that thing was red hot that was a great game They've had a couple a years comeback, after that. Yeah, for yeah. them. And yeah, they've yeah, been yeah. working on this forever. Yeah. So no super excited. I will say I was Can't amazed wait. by the amount of hate towards Dragon Age Inquisition that we saw during yeah, the rollout of Mass Effect. Oh, RPG fans are just the worst. That's just well, all it is. There, there is oh, a this ending is bad. Oh, come on, come oh, on. Oh, it didn't end the way it, <laughs> wait, in wait, my wait, brain. Wait. RPG fans come are on. critical? Yeah. They don't get it. I don't, know, don't, I don't know anybody do you who's think, critical as an RPG fan. Do you think gamers, and I'll just use that broad term, do you think gamers want open worlds as much as publishers, publishers and developers think they do? I was actually talking about with someone about this like I don't mind linear games like right. I don't mind I don't need every game to be this big experience I think what happened was games like The Witcher yeah. 3 launched and there's like damn this, this is, is the best thing huge, ever this huge world and everything kind of ripples across yeah, it which is I mean, really like, ambitious and I think people want to be able to compete with that now that 
felt like it set like this big standard of like what a good like but a big RPG should be. Even like the Tomb Raider reboots, where they were yeah. pretty, they were really good, and those were super linear. Yeah, and know? I said I don't mind it either way. Um, but what? I feel like it is now the focus if you want to be like you know known as oh god for the ambition is to take mm-hmm. on. These I think it's just more choice. I think that's what people want mm-hmm. is exactly. more like so. ownership over that journey, yep. whether that's linear that. or not, mm-hmm. and they want it to be lengthy. I think mm-hmm. that's another thing you always hear right away when you review something. It's like, how long did it take you to beat yeah, it? Yeah, that's, that's mm-hmm. the right. And you're like, oh, like 100 hours. They're like, that's not good enough. <sighs> yeah, they want a game because they're they super critical. Back to. Yeah. Well, I think to people. <laughs> Your voice sounds like the ape clan from Princess Mononoke. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> I think we come to it too. Is like we're, we're we're adults, but people only budget their money for so many games a year. And when they spend money, especially RPG fans, they want something they're just gonna be able to invest so much time into and keep. I mean, that's how I was growing up. It was like I saved my money for one RPG, finished it. All right, now I have more like money saved up now onto the next one but I always want to make sure I was getting the most <laughs> out of it so I feel like that's more kind of the landscape of you know the younger audience and what they want is sure. something that's going to fill their time well what about I, I, not this far yet but what about you know how it kind of narrows down with Final Fantasy 15 uh, in the second half how it becomes a little bit more linear I is that, that was, I thought that actually I mean I'm not far enough in to know everything yet because yeah. I'm only on like chapter 6 but I've heard, yeah, I've heard that it narrows down, and I find that really weird because, like, I'm at a point where, like, I just went to the first yeah. uh, Metropolis city, okay. and I really enjoyed like the open world stuff, and I, I don't, I feel like that's detrimental it's, in a way it, that well, why not you, wait till you get there? Yeah, is it it's better? All, it's all, enough? it's all narrative guess, driven, right? Okay. Like, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. There's some weird decisions there, and like them. Uh, going into stealth was a bad, bad, <laughs> yeah. bad, I'll, bad, I'll bad. Have, I'll have I'll, to see when most I get games there, when I they do that, unless yeah. you're like dishonored, but and you can't fool it. It works in the context of what they're doing. Yeah, okay. just wait till you get there. Okay. So, but I'm saying, is it stronger in the second half because of that more focused design? I think it is an example. I think of changing hey, paces is a good thing, yeah. right? Like I think when you're really locked into an experience and you're going for 30, 40, 50 hours, mm-hmm. and they throw you a curveball, that's never a bad thing mm-hmm. uh, necessarily in in terms of storytelling, but how they handle that content. That's the big thing. And okay. there's some some great stuff there and some really bad stuff. I think too, it's we're expectations. We're used to starting more linear and then getting bigger. So it kind of messes with that perception that we have in our heads where it's like, wait a second, I had all this open space to do and now you're dialing it back, which feels like an inverse from what well, we that's usually- that's what yeah. I'm thinking. But once again, I have- But I said, if it makes so. sense and like I said, for the story and the linear beats, um, I mean, for the narrative beats rather, um, I think I like when a developer can just kind of sit there and polish out an area and not worry about all this other stuff. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, hey, uh, number three is Mass Effect Andromeda. What do you guys think about that? Oh, well, yeah, no one, no, no one Moving talks on. about that. That's that my number two. Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh my god, oh, we're wow. flying. At least number two. Oh boy, uh, Red Dead Redemption Two. Hey. That's oh. my number one. That's my number one. That, right. that, was, that was close between Mass Effect Andromeda and Yeah, that's Shredder. my number Where's one. Where's it on your list? It's my number two. Oh. So it, I feel like let's go with the same Zelda question of if just the name Red Dead Redemption 2 was announced 2017, prank, just one tweet compared to what you saw in that trailer. Was there anything in the trailer specifically that got you more jazzed about it? I don't. I don't even think so. I just, I don't right. think so we I waited just want a so, continuation yeah. of that. We first waited story. so long for Rockstar just to confirm. Well, that's that, the thing. Yeah, that was a thing. Yeah. You just show me the Rockstar logo followed so by long. Rockstar North, and it's like number one. Yeah. It doesn't matter what it is. God, like, those guys game, are so good. Exactly. Last gen, last gen or whatever, it was my second favorite game. First favorite game being Bioshock, but like that was pretty high up there for me. Oh yeah, it's definitely one of my top games. So at least lay out the vision. What oh do you boy. want? What do you want from this great Red Dead sequel? What's your ideal oh Red boy. Dead sequel? That's a, it's a really difficult. Put you on the spot. Yeah, there, I know. Man. That's I know. a difficult thing to answer. Um, just I know, but just ad lib the script. How does it start? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Let's do this. Yeah. Do I have to be the one to do this? <laughs> Reiner, can you? Okay, Reiner, you're gonna be the sound of the wind on the planes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Alone Ranger is on his horse. Walk up. <laughs> the sun is setting. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Roar! I see cowboys in the distance. Um, <laughs> and sh- stuff happens. <laughs> okay. Well, that I sounds like a bold I, vision I, I that I can sign I cannot sign do for. improv. <laughs> <laughs> I think uh, Rockstar has proven with, uh, oh, the, you know, they can do great 
set pieces with the gameplay or, and great characters and I'm just interested to be back in that world again. Were there rumors been... that it was going to be like John Marston's son potentially? There, there are, but it's we actually Matt Burst did a great trailer breakdown right when that trailer came mm-hmm. out uh, talking about different theories about where it could take place. It seems like all signs are pointing towards prequel. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm personally hoping it shifts away from Marston as much as yeah, I love it, and I would kill to hear more of John Marston's voice. I'd be fine with a whole new cast. I'd yeah, also be fine yeah. with Marston younger too, but whatever. I, uh, I hope I hope they're a little more bold. When, than that. In I, think their, I think they could be bolder. Yeah. Do you in think, their press release, they said they're like reinventing what open world is or whatever. Just that comment, you're just like, oh god, what, what does, does that mean? mean? But with those guys, like rock oh, star, yeah, yeah, you're like, like, whoa, all right, I let's mean, do this. Yeah, exactly. Rockstar has been incredible for years. So yeah. I wonder, do you think that they would be so bold, be so bold as to have seven uh, playable characters? Do you I think mean, they that, had the three. Sure. That technology, you mm-hmm. got to think they, if they're going back to it, they'll enhance it. Yeah. Make it more mm-hmm. seamless. That'd be crazy. It'd be tough. It would be really cool to have a female protagonist. I know that's not going to happen. <laughs> At least they only so have cool. seven characters to choose from. I haven't done the ratio math on what the actual <laughs> demographics of the world are, but I don't think you can squeeze a female into seven characters. I don't know if they existed right. back then. No, they didn't. I don't know. 1924 was the first woman. Oh, wow. Yeah. I still love Bonnie from the original Red Dead. Yeah, I love her too. Both well, from Red Dead Redemption. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's going to be exciting. I, are you guys optimistic about it hitting 2017? Yes. Anybody I up for a gamble? I could see it being towards the end and maybe getting pushed into if it has to, but I feel like Rockstar waited so long to finally confirm this that's probably pretty far along at this point. I'm going to say September. Ooh. August, September. Yeah, they're already saying fall. Right? When did GTA 5? Was that October or... Boy, I don't yeah, know. somewhere around there. It's it's interesting. I mean, you forget how long it's been since the last proper Rockstar game. Because yeah. GTA uh-huh. has done such a good job of sticking around with the ports. It's still lighting up all the sales charts. The uh, add-ons they've put into mm-hmm. the multiplayer mode are just constant, and there's they're always in the news. That's true. It's so depressing. Like to look back at like PS2 era games, and it's like bully. Bully. Grand Theft Auto, <laughs> multiple Grand Theft Auto, yeah. San Andreas, uh, Vice City. That's Smugglers what we run. need next is them to say they're doing another man bully, hunts. and then we're set. bully too. They the pumped rest. out That's games. That's what I want. The yeah. Warriors, like they, it was just nonstop. They now we get bends. we get like one at a generation. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's generation defining, but still we could use. Oh more. yeah, come but on, I, guys. yeah, come on. Yeah. Uh, okay, where are we at now, Kim? You're number two. That was Persona. So. Oh, of course. We've right. gotten through everything on my list, actually. Yeah, my number two was Red Dead. Really? Is, is yeah, have my number one on? was Red Dead. Please? <laughs> my number one was Mass Effect. Okay. Cam, your number one, Red, Red Dead. Dead. Uh, number one for me, State of the K2, ladies and gentlemen. They say 2017 for, for number State of the one, K2. That's such a handsome number one pick. Thank you. That's what I was going for. I am me. So zombies. I just imagine a more finely tuned version of State of the K. Just make a bigger world, increase the weird social dynamics. Let's get some more dialogue in there. I'm so sick of hearing the same person be like, I'll crack a cold one for you when you get back to the base every single time. It, there's so much potential there. I'm skeptical it'll hit 2017, but if it does, I think uh, I think it's something to look forward to. Yeah. Do you guys have any uh, oddballs? I'm excited for that, by the way. Oh, the, good. The um, first one, I didn't get through it because it got really repetitive at points, but... Yeah, if they can fix that a little bit. The survival mode in the more updated one is is the way to go. It was DLC, Ooh. and now yeah, it's on that check one that that's out. on Xbox One. But uh, what do you guys have for scatter shots? I uh. know me and Elise both, and Ryan are maybe too near. Oh, know. yeah, that's right. That's coming out in March. I, I'm Okay, that's not making... I'm excited to play that. It's mm. not making my list because it is a new development team handling this this franchise. And it's the demo, it. actually. It's platinum, the, though, but right? But the demo went, went pretty w- yeah, I, well. Yeah, I enjoyed really it. Really well received by fans. Like, that's what I, I was waiting that for is that demo test to kind of... Con- mm-hmm. I don't know how the everything else will turn out, but I'm up. up yeah, I always hit it. the brakes on that at first. It's like, okay. It's it's going right. to be it's gonna be a weird game, obviously. Well, it's near. It's going to exactly. be Exactly. Yeah. But that's kind of what's appealing about it. So. Yeah. Uh, I, have a, I have a big list of things. You guys want to just run down some of the biggies? I got, what you think? Yeah, what about, okay. what about uh, Neo coming out in February? What? Neo. Oh, Neo, the Tecmo the, the, game. The, yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I was very confused for a second. I'm I was like, like, Matrix? I think they unveiled it. It's a PlayStation, PlayStation 4 Pro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's very clear. Uh, yeah. yeah. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, okay. N-I-O-H. Here's my story with that game. Yeah. I had no interest in it. Um, you know, people have done the Dark Souls comparisons with it. Um, I'm not 
I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I'm not the biggest Dark Souls fan, as we know. Burner House. Gun. I understand why people like it. It's just it's not. I don't have the patience. Oh, I'm with you required on, on it. But um, so at Tokyo Game Show this year, I got to demo it and I freaking loved it. And it like has all the same things that drive me nuts about Dark Souls. But for some reason, just the atmosphere is really cool. And um, I really latched on to like figuring out that world and kind of, you know, beating, besting these really tough characters so i'm excited for it team ninja right yeah okay yeah the remnants uh ryan what do you have on your overflow uh do you just want i have four more on Let, here. let's run let's them down do. baby okay injustice 2 yep oh sure. i love that first one uh not just for the fighting mechanics but as a narrative like it's a really cool superhero story and they just announced the release or teased it's the re- april it's or something like that right yeah. i think it might be may 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 um, okay did they eventually i remember there was rumors about them adding scorpion as dlc yeah. to injustice yeah, did they do there. that yeah i believe he's That's in so there. weird okay there's always like one oddball one in yeah there. i guess so uh and then prey uh oh yeah very we much blown right. that out on the site looks really cool arcane doing mm-hmm. kind of a bioshocky type of experience yeah i feel like i've ranted and raved about that game a lot in this podcast it deserves so much more attention it's not exactly my type of game but it is that system shock and bioshock crowds oh, exact type of game they should be so excited music for to it. my ears on that and That's then great. the multiplayer front for honor i'm hoping that turns out the it I, demos very well yes. yeah i played that. everybody on staff who has played that has come away pretty positive on it this is ubisoft's uh bizarre three faction multiplayer yes. fighter yeah, that's coming out, coming yeah. out but it, also has, it also has a single player campaign that's oh right. that's right i forgot valentine's mm-hmm. days when it comes and to then soon. the last one is a game i didn't expect to have on my list until we most recently saw a demo uh that expanded on what it was res evil 7 biohazard my God. That is soon. That's yeah. right around the corner. Yeah. That is two weeks. Yeah. The 24th. Yeah. Relatively soon. Right? How do you, how do you, what's your gauge on hype for seven? Uh, when I first saw it and it was very much like the haunted house kind of thing and trying to do jump scares and not doing them very well. I was like, yeah. this doesn't look yeah, good. Yeah. Same here. This isn't what I want. They're yeah. trying to do PT and they're doing PT's better. Yeah. Uh, it's more of a PYT. But then, yeah, they opened it up, showed gunplay kind of the weird monsters in the mansion kind of thing going on. And I was like, all right, this is what I want. Having it from first person, we'll see how that works out and mm-hmm. what the balance is there of spooky, jump scary, and res mm-hmm. evil. Uh-huh. But that that got me intrigued. And now it's like, okay, I'm on, I'm on board with this. Mm-hmm. I, I want to play that. It's an interesting formula to think of them in theory saying, hey, we're going back to basics. We're going to focus mm-hmm. on horror. It's going to be in this one location, kind of like the mansion. Everything's back to basics in so many ways but with the twist of first person. And yeah. I feel like just that twist, it's a little bit like adding the motion controls in Star Fox Zero. It's like, hey, it's everything you want, but it's not really. And I feel mm. like that community is just still outraged over the concept of first person. I'm curious yeah. to see how they react to it. Mm-hmm. We'll see. Yeah, but yeah, people forget that's right around the corner. Yeah. Uh, Good God. Uh, I have a bunch of other ones. Wait. I do too. Oh, at least, please. Elise go. Okay. Uh, one of mine is ukulele. Awesome choice. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm actually not... I. <laughs> I haven't played Banjo Kazooie, which is crazy, and I should. But uh, I am a huge Donkey Kong Country fan, and these are the rare guys. And I got to play ukulele at Gamescom, and I really liked it. I'd like to see more 3D platformers because yeah. they yeah. are such a rarity nowadays, yep. and they're just so playful and fun. And this, I mean, I've loved everything so far with ukulele. Uh, are you a Donkey Kong 64 fan? Uh, Donkey Kong Country. Okay, I feel good like answer. This exact That's a good conversation answer. before. <laughs> good answer. Yeah. Good answer. Uh, my next thing is Outlast Two. Oh, interesting. Ooh, okay. Yeah. Oh, weird. Um, yeah, that's a good pick. Yeah, I really enjoyed Outlast. Uh, it scared the crap out of me, and I cannot play it alone. Is that free on Xbox Live uh, right now? Or was I that last tell one? You. I couldn't. Oh no, tell they were you. just giving it away. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, I really like that first person and night camera stuff going on and i played the demo for outlast 2 and you 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 start off in this like rural town that's mostly abandoned except there's like these shadowy guys and like the trees and stuff and it's just really creepy Wait, like slenderman style guys uh i think they had faces but it was just very dark but it was creepy are they tall (laughs) they're tall people in the trees at night dude it it wasn't slenderman damn it (laughs) But uh, no, I, I really like the last series, and I'm looking forward to see what they do with that. Right on. Next thing is Tacoma, that I'm interested in, yeah. just because I was a big Gone Home fan. Um, I, we don't know a whole lot about Tacoma yet, but well, I'm, they from, change things around. From too. what I've heard yeah. of the people that played it, is like they enjoyed it, but it was kind of slow paced, which I'm fine with personally. It's gonna be so, fun to see that 
it's going to be the year of space stations between mm-hmm. that and Prey. Yeah, it's going to be weird if they end up releasing true. the same yeah. year. Yeah, and Mass Effect too. Yeah. Um, the next thing is perception, and I don't know if you guys know about that, but Mm-mm. it's uh, I think it's still coming out in 2017. But basically, it's this indie it's this indie horror game from a bunch of the irrational guys and oh. uh, and also uh, dang it, Dead Space. Ah. So it's by those like the the guys that made that, and you play as a blind character, and you uh, and it's a horror game, but I think it's kind of like Beyond Eyes in a way. If you guys know that, where your senses kind of uh, depend on like what you touch, and then you'll kind of it'll kind of like visualize it because you're a blind person. Anyway, I think that's really neat. That sounds really interesting for a horror game to like play with your senses Mm -hmm. like that. So that's been on my radar for quite some time. Huh. Um. And okay, last one is God of War. Uh, and that's, that's, not wait, that's, not, that's not that's 2017 not though. Yeah, so. I guess did they put a date on that at no, all? No, I mean maybe, but they, there's no date on that yet. Yeah, I, I would be surprised. Well, what does Sony's lineup look like for the end of 2017? The beginning, or yeah, the beginning has um, Horizon. What is the back half? Horizon. Do we know anything? No. PlayStation 4 is dead. Sell your unit. Come I'll buy it for Jesus five bucks. Christ. Well, actually, here, I well, am excited also for a Sony game. Um, Uncharted um, Lost Legacy. Yeah. Oh, I forgot uh, yeah. about that. That'll is be that, this year. Is that 2017? Yeah, that's yeah, 2017. Okay. Um, that sounds super exciting for me. I'm just a big I, Uncharted fan. Me too, so. and I, I happily take a twist on that series yeah. and a standalone thing. That sounds cool. I love that they're like, okay, yeah, this will be our DLC. They work out a deal with Sony, and then they're like, uh we overshot. Right. <laughs> it's kind of its own game yeah, now. That, that's what I like about it. It's like, all right, I, I can get behind this. Expand you could sell it as DLC, but I think this the is characters they're focusing yeah. on are interesting and different for that. So I, I, think cool. I, I think it was on the Uncharted 4 cover story trip. At some point, I think I asked Neil or Bruce about, like, would you guys ever want to make like a smaller indie scale and scope type of game and they're like i think if we tried to do that it would end up naturally ballooning into just a triple a game anyway and i feel like that's kind of what this <laughs> that dlc probably would happen yeah. so yeah I'm, yeah I'm super stoked for that yeah you got any remainders kim no that was it okay here's what we got crackdown three wait you got oh. multiple pages yeah i have oh 16 God. pages this is, why, this is why i just wanted to get through my last everything one that's coming. i know i know it's just gonna yeah here we go okay crackdown, crackdown three. three crackdown one was great two was a disaster hopefully they can go back to one okay halo wars two Sure. RTS on console. Right. First okay. one was fun. Also on PC. Wait, what about Tales of Berseria? Okay. What? That's yeah, coming okay. 2017? That's coming actually in two weeks, the 24th. Kingdom right. Hearts 2.8 as well. Cool. Uh, <laughs> you know a game that uh, last time it was mentioned, they said it was coming out in 2017. Oh, here we go. Fortnite. Yeah. Epic what Games What happened is Fortnite. to that game? I mean, I played it at... Um, Oh, I went to Judges Week a few years ago, like two, two or three years ago, and played that, and I loved it. And I was like, "This is really cool. I wish they could bring it to console because at the time, you know, PC." And uh, then they never heard about it again. And we did that cover story we before did. it, and yeah. Since people like fake Nintendo news, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna announce today: Switch exclusive uh, Fortnite. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna month happen. Exclusive. That's not true. And um, then it'll come out on. PS4 and PC and Xbox One. Yeah, I don't think they've announced it for any consoles yet, but I could see that partnership there's, happening this there's year. There's your fake news. Okay, right. Thank thing. you for the fake news. Uh, but it seemed like Epic just shifted all development over to Paragon. Yeah. And now this cutesy yeah. RTS. It's got to be common. This groundbreaking they game from 2013 that. will finally be coming out. I don't maybe. know. Do you think they would just scrap it? No. No. You know, okay. You think they put too much into it yeah. to not? Yeah, and it's such it's a fun. good idea. Yeah. It, it is it a for good hours. idea. I just don't understand why we don't hear about it or why they haven't done anything with it. It makes me worried that there's something going on that we don't know about development's hard um at least uh, this is probably on your radar night in the woods yes oh right that game looks that, awesome that's been pushed to february tall but, tree um, guys i am i am looking forward to that tall tree men uh no well, actually this is an adventure game yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very lighthearted yeah. animal cool abstract style um but if people are into some moody dialogue heavy adventures with great art it's the way to go mm-hmm. yeah i played it for like five minutes at e3 <laughs> and i enjoyed it I, I picked so. it at, a, at a playstation experience like once or twice when I went to that and I liked what I saw of it. It was probably it's... at the top of my list for like adventure games I'm excited about. You know what we forgot about? You know what's Sony's back half of the year? A game that regardless of how you feel about it, oh it's going to be interesting. Oh. Detroit Become Human. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait. You know, I, you know, I actually am looking forward to Where Detroit. Where okay. was that at PSX? Yeah, it was nowhere That's to be seen. Was no. it? Hey. Maybe they're saving it for E3. 
Oh, that could be. Yeah, I possible. want to play through that entire game in a video. Do you uh, know what my I'm dream so is, Hanson? For you to get David Cage on this podcast and just that pick his brain. Yeah. I would love Yo, it. Yo, Davey, if you're out there, yeah. Yeah. Uh, talk to that guy. I yeah. think you guys would have a great conversation. I would, I would have fun with that, yeah. too. We, I've talked to him several times. There's videos on the site. Uh, if you look up, I just got a Gameformer's YouTube channel, Realistically, but have you and search David to Cage. Him since Beyond? No. That's that's what I want. I just want to talk about the Navajo chapter. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> so I would good. love it. Uh, another game, little little title on a system that's not dead, Ever Oasis on 3DS. Yes. Okay, that too is on my. Actually, I wrote about that in my column last week. Is it's a little game that I'm excited about. I don't think it's gonna like change lives or the genre, but by mm-hmm. any means, it looks cool. It's, no, it's the 3DS a, is dead, right? Like, no, no, no. We also have Pikmin as as coming Switch, out on uh, 3DS. Come on, the Switch is coming out. It's gonna take when, away the 3DS. When are these games coming? Are they like spring? I don't know if they've announced release dates for either of those. They're just 2017. Maybe Ever Oasis has I one. I thought Ever Oasis is February, like end of February. But isn't Switch gonna be our handheld unit now? <laughs> I, that I seems hope. the way it's going to be. Wouldn't that be great? It would be, know, but it'll be. I can't find a... 3DSs now. But I wonder why that is. But yeah. We'll see. But Ever Oasis, it's uh, from the creator of Secret of Mana. Yep. Uh, the studio that is making Music it, they made the great ports of Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask. They mm-hmm. know that hardware really well. They're making an action RPG. It looks ambitious, looks cool, looks mm-hmm. a little monster huntery. Mm-hmm. Uh, check it out if you're excited about that type of thing. Uh, next on the list Guardians of the Galaxy from Telltale. Oh, yeah. Oh. What do you guys think of that? You nice. Know, I have pick. Heard That's a good pick, actually. Such good things from people about Batman. I haven't played it and I was worried for that that was just going to sink oh, um, just Batman because really it's good. really hard to tell I think you know an engaging Tale. Batman story that people aren't expecting well you have Rocksteady knocking it off. yeah exactly park, so it's just right? like there's so like, much competition yeah. yeah and I feel like people the that I see have just always raved to me you need to play that so that's actually next on my list it's yeah a, you absolutely should it's good I went back to it to try and finish it off over the break and you get used to Telltale when you're in the groove and playing a lot of those episodes, but when you take a break and go back to it, it's just so jarring seeing those keyframe animations of the eyebrows. Just the animations what? of the characters what? are they, so they cheap, and they a, drive a me nuts. No, by now? I don't know. never. Have you it got to the kissing, the kissing scene where there, no. the two character models just intersect God rather than the lips it. actually yeah. like I doing any animation? It's just <laughs> yeah. tough to go back to. They need uh, to nuke that, that engine. Scene in general. Yeah. Uh, next on the list, probably the most important game, 2017, uh, the port of Lego City Undercover. Wildly underrated game. Hmm. I think it's the funniest game you ever. You know written. what? We should. They usually release what, like two, three games a year, and it seems like Dimensions might be on the way out. Yeah, there's got to be some some new ones coming. soon. What do you think? What's it gonna be? Ooh, what are the Marvel movies that are out now? I guess you got to look at that. Maybe Thor. And... I mean, Episode Eight seems like a slam dunk, right? If Star Wars did, Episode Eight. Awakens oh on man. Its own. Don't they have a Batman movie coming out too? Lego Batman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They'll oh, that, probably they, do that. They've already done three of those games. Well, um, I mean, just based off the movie. Maybe. Yeah, I could see that. They did, they did the last Lego movie mm-hmm. as a game. Mm-hmm. I, I put those on my list. That, okay, that, great. That's exciting. I always like what they do. Uh, I don't want to hear any uh, belly aching, Reiner. You're not allowed to come in with some hate. Metal Gear Survives coming out in 2017. Everyone smile and nod. Everyone smile and nod. Okay, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot of, you know, like anger about Konami continuing without Kojima and all that. What do you like about this? Like, what is what is kind of making you excited to? I'm to excited check this for out? something different. I don't. I love Metal Gear's story a lot, but I just not see it as a sacrosanct thing that can't be touched. And if it has Metal Gear Solid Five's gameplay and has some wacky Gameplay's survival mode, awesome. I can play yeah. co-op against fighting down zombie mm-hmm. hordes and try and build up a base, basically Fortnite it up. That's enough for me. Yeah, that's no, fine. I think that I think that's fair. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, thank you, Reiner. Mm-hmm. Um, Overkills the Walking Dead supposedly coming out 2017. That's the Payday Two style Walking Dead game. Yeah, that we could don't be know. Cool. I feel we've like never we've heard seen about that. this game for a long time, and as Reiner said, haven't seen anything. Yeah, we've saw their VR demo, which isn't this game at all. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we'll see what they do. Who knows? That's, that's puzzling. And then also uh, probably that Destiny sequel that we've been hearing so much about. Uh, In theory. Number six? Yes, two, Destiny four? Six. Uh, <laughs> two. It Destiny could two. be it could be one of the biggest games of the year. If we look back on this podcast, it's like, how did we not talk about the sequel yeah. to Destiny or whatever the hell it is if it does mm-hmm. hit this year? Um that's it. That sounds like a good year, you guys. Oh, it's Hopefully. gonna be awesome. And you know there's gonna be more announced as we yeah. move along here. Oh yeah. Uh and oh, yeah. Switch, here's the most puzzling thing. Yeah. Switch comes out in two months. Jeez. Not one game like announced for it outside of like, we're gonna port this game over there. Right? Like yeah. These these games, these launch games are only going to get two months of exposure before they're upon us. Yeah, That's crazy. It is. Like third party's got to be like, oh my gosh. It's a new world, yeah. It's... But if they push it hard and 
in theory, when people are listening to this, they yeah, probably know whether or not they had an impression. Yeah, Games usually get like six soon. months, a year of marketing. Yeah. You know, like these are just here it is and it's out. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it feels. I mean, a, do you really need a lot of marketing though for like a Mario game or like for well, if they're going I mean, with their big guns? Let's say those, like for you Nintendo, know. no. Yeah. Like yeah. that's the unfair yeah. advantage yeah, from there. Exactly. Like, that's you why see I the feel plumber, like they can like, get away with this. Yeah. Come hang out in my house. Where most but people would be like, "Oh my god, why would you do that?" But I feel like. But if you're they, a third party, like here's my new, I don't know, puzzle cooking game. We'll talk about it all next week, and we'll be very, very informed. We'll yeah. have played all these things. It'll be fun. Uh, do you guys move on to cool community emails? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. All right. let's do it. And welcome back to the Informer Show. That uh, delightful. There's construction going on, but you guys, this condo is going to be so beautiful. Just the most beautiful condo oh, you've man. ever seen when it's done. Swimming so it's all going to be on top worth of it. it. All that. And every podcast listener and podcast viewer is going to get to enjoy the fruits of its labors because they all get free condos. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, but if you want to win, if you want to win something absolutely amazing, oh, you boy. can write in an email to podcastinginformer.com. Every week we choose the best of the best mm-hmm. and then the very best on top of that. And we ship out our favorite email. We ship out the person who sent it, the favorite email. We ship them out something real nice. Uh, their dreams come true. So send emails into podcastinginformer.com and uh, that's what we're going to do right now. All right, let's do it. All this stuff. My favorite part. Is it really? Mm-hmm. I like part? this. What about the part after this where we play back of the box trivia? No, that, I hate that part. I'm not part. doing that. All right, well, stay tuned. We're going to get around to it. Anyways, uh, right. first email pressure. is from Aaron from Buckhorn. He's quick to point out. Uh, ben and company, when Dan Tack is not talking... When when Dantec is not talking, is he wearing sunglasses, relaxing nonchalantly? Regardless of your answer, this is how I'll go on picturing him. I listen to podcasts every week, but I've never seen any video. Um, yeah, Dantec, he has sunglasses on. Wait, he's, he's leaning He's not back. watching video of this. The no. Dantec expressions are why you watch it on a he's video. He's probably rolling his eyes at <laughs> yeah. this question right now. It's like I can't yeah. believe someone's not watching me. I think. Future scientists are going to study Dan Tech's skull and just his overall corpse. God forbid the day that he passes from our cherished earth. Oh man, because it's got dark fast. Because his eye muscles have to just be bulging. It's just like a runner's calves, you know, because they are constantly rolling. Just veiny on the backside. Yeah, just rolling for two hours every podcast. That's strenuous. Do you think he just like muscles. injects like steroids tonight, into his eyes? Reiner, I don't know that. I know for a fact. That that's exactly what wow, Dantec you've, does. Wow, you've seen it in like a hotel room. He's just like... <laughs> Absolutely. Nothing but eye steroids for Dantec. But thank you, Aaron. You should check out the video version. It's yeah, you're late. missing out. Uh, Mike writes in and says, Hey, Ben and GI crew. I'm a big fan of Replay, and I mostly watch it night Aww. when my family is sleeping. Oh. oh. So is there a possibility... Is there a possibility of adding a Reiner alarm to Game Informer videos? It's been more than a few times when my wife has asked me who the loud man was. <laughs> Uh, I always lo- I always love hearing Reiner, but his sudden outburst at surprising video game moments forced me to watch the show with my fingers on the volume buttons. Okay, oh. I, I have a response for him. Yeah. These headphones. He's pointing to his headphones. He says, Ryan, it, this is like a conversation with Mike. I'll be Mike here. He says, I would use my headphones, but Beats by Dre are apparently Whoa. not made to last. Any answers to this pressing matter would be appreciated. I mean, you can... Get headphones in a box of cereal now, right? Like, but why should Mike buy headphones when you can just relax and stop no, screaming? Get out of there! The, it's every part of the show. Minutes. An expensive solution would be just to yeah. When you're playing games at home, do you scream out, "Whoa! Look yeah. at that!" Oh yeah, <laughs> Kelly's like, Evie can hear you through the vents. Like, you you got to keep <laughs> it keep down. your baby in the I vents. I mean, she. I will get texts like, "There's probably a couple on my phone right now." Just like he, he keeps his young you girl gotta, in the vents like Bioshock. <laughs> <laughs> like playing Overwatch multiplayer. Oh God! I, I get yelled gone. at all the time by my fiance. He's like, "I'm trying to sleep," and I'm just mm-hmm. like, "Sorry." I think it's more of a room situation, at least as far as that. No, it's <laughs> it's who I am. Uh-huh. I'm proud of that person, and yeah. I'm going to continue to be that person, regardless of one person named Mike who doesn't like it. Mike, we love you. Thank you for watching replay. I don't, but buy some headphones. No, I don't like them. I'm sorry, Mike. You can no, no longer watch replay because Reiner is being a weirdo. Um, crew Hunter. This is your name. You are cool. Uh, writes in and says, good morning. With the start of the new year, what resolutions do you think the games industry should make for itself? For example, the industry should exercise more quality assurance practices, less mm. glitches, Ooh, remaster franchises. Um, what do you want? What's your most optimistic 2017 desire? I, he says we don't have to be realistic about it, but what's your resolution? One thing that's driving me nuts is 
I like to play games at launch. Like if I'm excited for a title, I want to play it then. I'm so tired of getting a game at launch. And then, you know, a few weeks later, the dev announces that they're changing things around or fixing things or like, you know, even something like Final Fantasy 15 where there's that bull chapter that you have. Oh, I just swore. Okay. Um, <laughs> that was an accident. But besides that, like, it's like, well, yeah, but I played the game at launch because I was excited. I was a fan. It's, it's great that you're fixing it, but I wish we had less of those like, all right, we're going to release this and, you know, it's completely done and thought out mm. and then not later going back and fixing it. That's what, what I would like. What would you have them do? So would quality them- control. Yeah. I'd rather them take, like, I know Final Fantasy is in a bad position because it got delayed so many times, but I'd rather them just, like, you know, I can't believe when they tested that, that that tested well, A. So, B, they had to have known there was something not quite right with it, and I wish they would have taken the time to kind of tweak that before release. Because so many, and, like, Final Fantasy is not the only game that's, like, doing this as well. So, um, it's something I wish for the year. Like, when it is at launch, it is complete solid and i'm not gonna like months down the line be like oh i should have played this three months from now because that's what i'm sick of happening to me and i'm like as somebody who supports and really gets excited about games and buys them on day one i feel like i get gypped of the experience a bit i'm like oh i should have just waited and i don't like feeling that way um because that's like this is the first in years where i felt like God, I shouldn't have bought that at launch. I mean, I know like you look at a games like Bethesda who you know will like iron out some kinks with the bugs. Think, and especially when it comes going. to story content. Yeah, I think that's yeah, the thing with yeah. 15 is like, well, how do I go back to play chapter 13 yeah. now? Like, yeah, that's you know. what I don't like when in terms of story and other things. I'm fine with like tweaking. Like you expect when you play games at launch, there's going to be more bugs than if you play them yeah. once for now. But just like the exclusion of like certain content and like yeah. making things, you know, more nuisanced through updates mm-hmm. just yeah i don't like that i've got a, i've got a couple quick ones reiner i feel like we talked about it a couple weeks ago on the podcast mm-hmm. but konami just make a good party version of bomberman there <laughs> is no bomberman on steam just port bomberman it's konami or is it bandai it's konami it is okay yeah just do something with the bomberman license yeah it's right there it's a great party game and there's not really a great way to play it outside of WiiWare. uh and then number two this one's a little more controversial uh-oh Blizzard, you've already ditched Battle.net, which is sad. That's mm-hmm. a good legacy to go. The next legacy to go, Blizzard, change your logo. Let it go. <laughs> it's 90s as hell, and it's cool, and it's old school, but you can let it go. You know what one is awesome? The Blizzard logo on the front of the Warcraft movie, where it's oh. doing like the big rotation. It's up close on the letters, and you can see the char- you can see like Tracer in there and different different Warcraft characters. It kind of looks like, like the that. Marvel intro type of thing. No, it's like a big 3D thing. It ends okay. up being the same Blizzard logo, but that little flyby of the characters in there is super cool. Did you shout out like a moment in replay? Yeah, in I was the like, theater? yeah, <laughs> <Tracer>! <laughs> new logo, Blizzard, you did it. But it's so craggly and weird yeah. and complicated. It's not sure. easy to put on a T-shirt, slap it on a plastic lunchbox. Yeah, it looks, yeah, it's got to it go. Best. It's, it's got to go. You guys have any? Uh, chill out with the different versions of games at retail. Like I did an editorial on this of like, I feel like I'm buying a car now. Like with yeah, you know, seat warmers and crap. Just sell me the <laughs> damn game. Like there's 18 versions, and it's like some of them yeah. will list something like. Like Final Fantasy 15 had one like comes with fishing kit and it's like, what does that mean? Right. Does that mean it's not in the main game? Yeah. Do I have totally. to get this version? Like, mm-hmm. screw off. It's Just like, sell me the game. If you pre order Resident Evil 7, you get healing items. It's like, yeah. yeah, what does that mean that yeah. the rest is going to be this cr- crazy survival run? Like, we had a good thing going on the NES where you just bought the <laughs> game and you could pop it in and play it and it wasn't broken. Oh, God. Get back to it. All right, Grandpa. Uh, Michael. From St. Paul, Minnesota, writes in and says, Hey there, GI. What do you think uh, new Mario platformers can do to stay innovative? I was blown away by the creativity and inventiveness of the Galaxy games, and I was wondering if it will be possible for them to capture that same feeling again. 3D World was great, but not the same for me. And the recent 2D games have been solid, but pretty dull. Yeah, nothing. It's dead. Switch is dead. Griner, what is this? (laughs) It's terrible. It's all over. I hate it. Uh, I think uh, he's not giving 3D World enough credit. Like, it's not going to blow your mind. I the same amount as when you first played Galaxy. but I, I, I would love a Galaxy 3. Right. That well, th- what about the... I mean, maybe they announced something more when you're listening to this, but what about the footage they showed uh, running on the Switch where it looked like the Galaxy perspective, at least? Yeah, that would be that would be great. Okay. You just want that perspective, not necessarily like the uh, cosmic rotation orbit angle? Yeah. 
I, I think there's I, only so much you could do with that, like mm-hmm. the jumping mechanics. I think right. it's what you add on top of like Sunshine had the cool like spray mechanic, mm-hmm. right? Like mm-hmm. add other gameplay mechanics to it. And everybody hated Sunshine at the time, incorrectly. Um, but the game far, was amazing. So you just want you want some new gimmick, yeah. some new maneuverability gimmick for a 3D Mario? Yeah, that, well, that could be really interesting like actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Portal but, gun. <laughs> yeah, that's all it takes. <laughs> but I mean, that's the that's the kind of the idea yeah. though. It's like that's... some kind of element that. Adds new gameplay. That was what was but so you still have the standard jump. That was what was so interesting about Galaxy, right? It was because it did all these cool things with like the gravity, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what made it That was its gimmick. I wonder yeah. how much that perspective shapes people's views on the game. Like, I think there was a... there. Okay, so some modder took Mario 3D Land and took those levels, but moved the camera and you had to tweak some of the levels because of this, but move the camera so it was Mario 64 perspective, and everyone was losing their mind in the forums, but like, oh my God, this looks so great. This looks like so much more fun. It's like, it's still the same platforming. It's just yeah. there's something uh, about that 3D land, 3D world perspective that rubs people the wrong way, and I don't mm, get it personally. I don't yeah. know. Anyways, uh, I'm excited but for the new Mario. Also, I'd just take another Galaxy too. If they're, just, yeah, uh, if they're I, bankrupt I on ideas, and they're just like, <laughs> oh, here's, here's part three, I'd be like, cool, that's yeah, awesome. Sure. Uh, here's a question that relates to you, Kim, oh, a Lord. little bit. Felix from Paris, uh, Old Paris. Hi, right? Felix. Elise, is that how you say it? Felix? No, no Wait, Paris. sorry. Oh. <laughs> Paris? Oh. Pope Paris. Oh. Elise Pope is Paris. French, everybody. Uh, hey, Ben, and your sexy GI crew? All right. Congratulations, uh, you're you guys. You're excluded from that. That's fair. No sex there. That's fair. I'll probably never eat a ghost pepper in my life, but oh, you guys God. did several times. Mm. Uh, I've seen the look on your faces and JV doing the whole John Carpenter thing. <laughs> um, could you, is he talking about the thing in the end? Yeah, um, I guess. Could you please describe this intense feeling by only using video game titles? <laughs> what? This is what Felix wants. Well, hmm, I wish I had time to prepare for this. Mm-hmm. Um, what? I'd go with um, Red Faction Oh, in your mouth. Yes. Um, even though Mars is cold, but you get the idea. Um, Gearbox was working on an adaptation of Heat uh, years and years ago. Yeah. Or something like that. But oh. there's only one game that really fits here. Kim. What? Super hot. Super hot. Come on. That is true. Uh, yeah, I don't recommend it. No. I, I I'll never always, do it. Well, I always forget a year passes, and I'm like, yeah, it wasn't that bad when I did it, and then I do it again. Because like, it, it's... For charity, it's a good cause. I always rationalize it. Like, I can be uncomfortable for a little bit, but then as you're in the moment, and at first you're fine, but then all of a sudden it finally hits, and you're like, oh, my God. And then you're just uncomfortable for about 15 minutes, and then you're fine. Hmm. Well, then the next morning it's a little uncomfortable, too. But what about (laughs) – the only way I can describe what it feels like is it feels like a molten hot vice grip, except it's pressing down on your tongue and all the inside of your mouth. It's just like this heat pressure mm-hmm. combo that you don't expect Sounds awful. next year actually i haven't revealed this plan but we're just gonna put one string through the studio that is an electrified fence and then people will pay <laughs> pee on us it. to grab on it oh. or pee on it yeah anything yeah. Like it that. turns out people like watching us um on be tortured yeah be yeah. tortured i didn't want to use it like that but no, yeah but they do they do i d- enjoyed throwing pies this year much yeah. more than for thirty thousand dollars <laughs> reiner you can rip my pinky finger off oh my god Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm saving up now. Kim, electrified fence or ghost pepper next year. If you had to grab onto it or eat a ghost pepper, how long do you, do? you have to stay onto the electrified here? fence? Too. Well, I don't think you once just you grip to... it, you're on it. Yeah, I think once you <laughs> well, grip I mean, like, it, you're how on long, it. Yeah, how long do I have so to Someone has to just pull you it? off. You have to hold on to it as long as Alan Grant did in Jurassic Park and do the. Ah, 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 <laughs> that's what I was thinking in my head. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good question. I'm not uh, really planning on doing this, by the way. I, was just I know, thinking I know about but it's a good devices. question. Like the ghost pepper. Uh... I would wrap myself in electric fence before <laughs> I would eat a ghost pepper. I feel like the electric <laughs> fence is like you're uncomfortable, but then it's like you can quickly recover from it. Whereas like the ghost pepper just kind of lingers a little bit longer where you're just in this extreme state of discomfort. But if you're a thrill seeker, you should do it. Like I did two in one night. It won't kill you. If you want to brag you're about really it to your friends. You're really good with those ghost peppers, though. Oh, you, you've mastered the art of just... Swallowing really fast. I got Thank one. You. Yeah. yeah. Red Dead. Uh, it's red pepper. Oh, yeah. Red yeah. Dead. Ah, good. That is good, Reiner. Red Dead. There we go. Uh, Eric Howder writes in and says, Hey, all. Uh, so when I was playing Fallout 4 last year, I was given the Here Kitty Kitty quest to go and find the little girl's cat. So I dutifully went out and found the cat to finish the quest. Then I suddenly thought, I'm about to kill this hooker's cat. <laughs> and I clubbed it to death with a baseball bat while my kids who were watching me play squealed Ooh. in horror. Yeah. That's I don't know, dramatic. Eric. 
Uh, recently, while playing this War of Mine, the Little Ones expansion, I expressed interest in eating the beggar children that keep showing up <laughs> at my doorstep and was frustrated that the game didn't allow for an option to at least capture and enslave them. My kids were again horrified at my lack of feeling for in-game characters. All right, step one, Eric. Get a separate room to yeah, play. Yeah, you should, should not be watching this. What yeah. are you doing? Don't expose, expose the children to your crazy Keep tendency. them in the vents yeah, like yeah. an adult. Yeah. Um, my question is this. What is the meanest thing you have done Hmm. or wish you could have done in a game. All right, well, I'm never oh, mean in man. games. I can't bring myself to do it. Um, That's a good I don't question. think I've ever done, the worst I've done is like purposely kill like a Sims character by, you know, locking them in. Or, you monster. Yeah, oh I gosh. just, it's really hard for me to be bad in games. That's why I think like the Witcher challenges me so much because I'm like, well, these are two awful options. Somebody's going to suffer here and I'm going to be upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> so the Bioware games. Yep. Like they give you some pretty evil choices of like there's the big scale ones of like mm -hmm. almost mass genocide and yeah. like KOTOR and stuff mm -hmm. like that where you're poisoning the yeah. water. But then there's the ones that are just like just evil for the sake of Yeah, evil. like, hey, my husband ran out here, he went to look for this robot or my this robot this woman fell in love with because her husband died. She's like, Is he out there? And you're like, you find out that it's totally dead, like broken, or her husband's dead, whatever it is, and then you go back to her and you're like yeah, he's out there. You should go find him. You know, you could have that kind of response. It's just like, or don't you? That's like, just being mean to be me. Don't you push yeah. someone out of a window if you want to in sure. Mass Effect Two? At one point, there's actually yeah. like an option. There's a killing Ashley felt up. really terrible. In Slapping three. the reporter was fun too. Yeah, that's like yeah. Really the fun. reporter yeah. thing was. was awesome. I, I actually was just playing the Undead Nightmare DLC for Red Dead, and <laughs> I forgot how much they hit you over the head with how much of a dick you are to Sasquatch. Do you remember this? There's a mission where you have to hunt down and kill like eight Sasquatches around the world. Sasquatch? And then you get to the last one and he's just crying under a tree. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> oh, my people, you slaughtered them. I'm the last one. You're a monster. And then like that's it. The quest's over. And you can just quietly walk away and think about what you've done. Or, of course, playing with my friends. If we've had a few, it's like, well you got to put the Sasquatch yeah. out of his misery. Yeah. And shooting that Sasquatch felt it feels terrible. terrible. <laughs> I feel bad I like hunting whales in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Mm -hmm. Right, what is with you in Black Flag? <laughs> um, but, I mean, this is an actual example of like, yeah. I'm stabbing dudes left and right. To t -t 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 -t. Mm -hmm. Doesn't phase me at all. Just totally desensitized to that. But then when you get that whale hunting mission, you're like, this feels kind of gross. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that is. It really I, is strange. It's called morality. Uh, right? I actually, oh. I, I had a moment uh, the other night. So I'm playing a lot of Stardew Valley lately, which I right. really like. And, um, you know, there's that guy in the bar. I can't remember his name off the top of my head who just is always like, go away. Da, 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 you know, why are you talking to me? And so I bought him a beer thinking it would like break the ice. And like, of course, that's like a heart comes up. So I bought him another beer. And is this the goth kid Sebastian? Not the goth kid Sebastian. The... Um, mm. The kid who's always in the corner drinking but yeah, won't talk to you. Is. He's mean to you. Okay. Anyways. Um, but anyway, so we have this like little cutscene moment that pops in and he starts telling me just like how depressed he is with his life. And I'm like, I should not be giving this guy alcohol. But it's the <laughs> only way to raise his friend. Like you feel like you're contributing to like this downward spiral. There's probably you could probably hand uh, him an you, egg you or just something. Get to yeah. <laughs> You That's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah. it's like, but I was like thinking about I it because he like this, this big speech on just like how, you know, he's just so depressed. And I'm like, I probably shouldn't be given enough. One day you're going to be running to the cave. You're just going to see his corpse floating down the river. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's going to be my fault. I think fault. for me, like the meanest I've ever been was probably with The Sims because I, I grew up with The Sims and my best friend and I would just like torture them. Yep. <laughs> I would just, torture them. I, I would actually you know, torture my keyboard by spamming trying to get nude codes in the original <laughs> Sims. That's right. the most torture I inflicted. Uh, tying up someone in Red Dead, putting them on the train track. Oh, yeah. But right. they reward that behavior with they an do. achievement, right? Do they really? Yep. I think so. You can always justify it. I did for the achievement. It mm. is really effed up just that sitting is, there waiting. It, yeah, you are waiting, and then you're like, I what's going to happen? And you know what's going to happen. Also, <laughs> in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, you can kill the horses, and you get achievements for that, too. What? And the achievement says, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> anyway, I did that and I felt instantly horrible. Yeah, well, it was okay because you got an well, there's, enough. There's of it. part of that is just like, can I do this? Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, like, you're just testing the limits of the game. It's to like see. you're in a shooter and there's an NPC in front of you and your guy's got the gun out and you're like, can I shoot him? And a lot of times it won't happen, but then other yeah. times you do and you're like, oh, well, well, I won't do that again. You know, what should be a perk in Call of Duty is uh, if you are good enough, you should be able to just transform into a cute little puppy. 
because then no one's going to want to shoot a cute puppy. They'll feel terrible You'd be about surprised. It. You'd be surprised. I don't know. I think a lot of people would hold their fire yeah. reflexively. Uh, Stuart Blessman writes in. He writes in a lot. He's great. He says, hey, guys, welcome back. Thank you. Um, so there's this channel on Twitch that shows nothing but speedruns, and the one currently playing is Speedy Gonzalez for the Super Nintendo. Have you guys seen oh, this game? Wow. I remember this. And game. it's yeah. clearly a Sonic clone, right down to the trademark figure eight as Speedy Sonic Runs. We were just talking with Speedy Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. a that was weeks my ago. nickname in, <laughs> in baseball because I was super fast at stealing bases. So Are you faster up. than me, Kim? I think so. Not, if probably we not, raced? not anymore. I probably uh, not. Let's do it. I used to be a cross country track runner. So, oh, really? Yeah. I don't think I'm fast, uh -huh. but I'm, I'm always interested in racing people. It's a good challenge. There's nothing more definitive than just starting here. Who can get I used there to first. be able to run a mile in six minutes. This does not happen anymore. A little below it too. I Hanson, once... you're someone I don't see being coordinated in no. those ways. No, no. Like never tried this. Can we so... do? Can we do hurdles? Oh my god! That'd no. Be so funny. Please but do I hurdles. But I just see you like after a few seconds, just all your mechanics start to break down. Yep. And it's just like a mess. Like oh, a, a so. John Carpenter thing ca creature well, just running remember, down the road. Do you remember the classic Kudo situation from E3 with Connect, where he's going to show you at the bottom of the Avatar's shoe looks like and then his hands just like go with <laughs> yeah. his... That's basically what I look like trying to run at a certain point. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I once fainted running the mile and... Uh, Broke my pinky. Oh, oh. wow! The Ow. tip of my pinky was way back oh, here. God. It yes, was no. effed up. Um. Anyways, that's it. No. So he says, "What obvious gaming clones have come out that were better than the originals or did interesting things?" Stardew Valley. <laughs> for every Wing Commander, there's a Tie Fighter. For every Diablo, there's a Titan Quest. For every Super Mario, there's a Commander Keen. I don't know about that. Uh, then he says, uh, "Tell me if this makes sense." Hail to the dope fish. Swim, swim, hungry. Does that mean anything in replay lore or anything, Randy? Uh, maybe I. <laughs> <laughs> Someone will let us know. Yeah, hail to the dope and... fish. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, Stardew Valley is the obvious example. Yeah. Are there other clones that you guys really fell in love with? That's a tough one. Ooh. That is tough. Jeez, clones. Like, outright clones. Yeah. You know, that happens a lot on mobile. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, with, like, Trees had I mean, a bunch of clones we... that were pretty good. Not that it's out yet, but can we stick ukulele in that? Kind oh, maybe of? a little bit. It's, it's from the same creator. It's different. It's... I'm trying to remember what it was. Spiritual successor, I guess. I accidentally more. insulted the creative director for the Arkham series once on the cover story trip for Arkham Knight <laughs> because I was talking to him about his early game development history and he was talking about this game that he made for the Dreamcast. And I wish I could remember, but it was a lot like Twisted Metal. Um, and as he was describing it, I was like trying to understand what he was talking about. And I'm like, oh, it's just like a Twisted Metal clone? <laughs> And he, I think he was a little insulted. <laughs> He's like, well, we did not consider it a clone. It was very sophisticated. It was doing interesting things. Like, okay, Septon, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Hill. I'm sure it's Cell great. damage? No, it's not no. cell damage. God, I wish I could remember. It has some forgettable name. But if you're a big fan of the Arkham series, go back and find it. Um, anyways, Sherman from Florida writes in, hey, GI crew, quick question. Who do you think in the industry would make a competent president of the United States? Oh, God. Hideo Kojima, Peter Moore, Ken Levine. <clears throat> I personally think Phil Spencer would make a great leader. He'd always just wear like a T-shirt that says like, Rhode <laughs> Island on it or something. I don't know what it would be. Uh, who do you who do you think from the industry? Oh man, greatest president. That's mm. a tough question. I don't know if legally Hideo Kojima would be allowed to be president of the United oh, States. I don't think I'd want that. Yeah, I mean, leave it for Solidus. <laughs> Maybe you know some of those former Naughty Dog brass like mm -hmm. Andy Gavin or Jason Rubin. Mm. They might be good picks. Okay, uh, they did Rubin. good things. Yeah, Jason uh, Rubin all I, through their career. Sure. Um, he put THQ to bed. Hopefully, he wouldn't put the country to bed. Yeah, we should just make it Kamiya so he can just like tell everybody there. Yeah, we need a president uh, to insult people on Twitter. Yeah, go on yeah. <laughs> Cliff Blazinski. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the one, the one choice. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking something very similar. Uh, I was thinking Rod Ferguson. As far as a producer that gets stuff done, you look at Epic while well, Rod was there versus Epic when Rod wasn't there, and also the fact that he then went on ship Bioshock Infinite out the door, started up. Basically, a new development team at the coalition, Ship Gears War 4, came out great. Like, that guy gets stuff done. I think he'd yeah. be good. I just, you just put a sleep dart in the back of his neck and make him wake up as president. <laughs> Let's do it. No way around it. Uh, Reiner, speaking of Metal Gear and Kojima, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Markifava did a feature on the website um, that rounded up Game Informer's Game of the Years going back mm -hmm. to 1991 mm -hmm. um, or whenever you guys started doing it. Uh, and there was one entry that I was really fascinated by. I've never heard you talk about it. But in 2001, you, Andrew Reiner, said, Metal Gear Solid 2 is, without a doubt, no hesitation, the greatest game I've ever played. Yeah. That, that is blew, high praise. That, I mean, that was a long time ago. But yeah, that blew my mind. Like, I know a lot of people, like, kind of hung their hat on Metal Gear Solid 1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I thought the gameplay in 1 wasn't the best. Like, no. the moments 
you know, like those, you know, put the controller down, all that stuff. The gimmicks were good. <laughs> the storytelling was unique at the time. But two, as a, as a narrative, I thought was very good. And I think Kojima really hit his stride at that point. I know people are like, oh, he's so long winded and all that. But man, he put so much work into that script. And then not being afraid to change it. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just being like, you guys like this character, all that. Well, I'm switching switching gears. You're going to play someone else. People didn't like uh, anime Kurt Cobain as much as as Snake. But I thought that was brilliant. And I, that gameplay that followed was fantastic. And yeah. Bert, the, that ended? Wow. Yeah. I, the last time I played that game was right before 4 came out. And it kind of goes down in history. It's just, oh, this crazy convoluted nonsense story, classic Ojima. But last time I played, I was like, oh, this is actually surprisingly coherent and really smart. It's all just about the overload of information across the internet and dealing with memes. It's such a bizarre game, but it is definitely in my top six games for potential game clubs. I think it'd be a really interesting just one-off. So good. But I, I hate to call you out on stuff written in 2001, mm -hmm. but isn't like your favorite game of all time, like Link to the Past or something? Well, yeah, that's the thing. It's like my favorite series of all time is Zelda. Yeah. So I'll say number one is Zelda. Like if we look back on it now, like the game that kind of got me going in games and all that, Zelda blew my mind. Yeah. Little Young Reiner's mind still hasn't <laughs> recovered fully. Like, uh -huh. uh, but at a point in time, yeah, like Metal Gear, it's like that was just crazy town what they did, and there was a lot of backlash that came from that. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, like, man, you don't see even today you don't see developers taking chances like like he did back mm -hmm. then. And so you're just in love with the afterglow of that game, like around that time. It's like, man, this is unforgettable. Oh, yeah, just the best. And where it is now in the legacy is a little lower, well, considerably lower. But at the time, it was just. You got everybody has to play this game. I'm it is so good. It's my second favorite Metal Gear. I would even say uh, three is my favorite now. Okay, more than two. Interesting. Yeah. Um, Jose Rivera writes in from Columbus, Ohio. Hey guys, Max Hubris here. He has code names. Uh, just wondering when did podcast gaming, listening while playing, begin for each of you? If you do it, uh, and what if any could the growing trend of silent gaming have on game audio design? Uh, as for myself, I'm a hardcore podcast gamer. Nothing beats grinding a podcast. That's correct, Jose. Um, do you guys listen to podcasts when playing games? No. Not at all. Cork does. He just wrote a really good feature on what he listens oh, to right. when he plays games. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many games where I can't imagine not listening to podcasts. Like, as much as I love Stardew Valley, just listen to podcasts. So yeah. much of that is just watering crops, counting beans. Like, I guess can... for certain games, it matters more for the sound. Um, like, as you said, with Stardew Valley, I could see. But I really don't. I don't know why. I, I think it's difficult for me to... Like, I'm not a terribly good multitasker to begin with, mm -hmm. so I feel like if I'm listening to something else, then my focus isn't really going to be Well, I feel game. like I'm not focusing on the podcast, which is what I want to be it focusing on, the of. conversation, yeah. so I feel like that takes me out of it. So when I want to really, yeah. like, focus on something, I just do one thing yeah, at a time. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah, if it's not narrative-driven, I'll listen to something. Baseball season, mm -hmm. I'm listening to the Cubs, usually. There we go. Uh, but outside of that, yeah, there's, there's podcasts I'll listen to, or uh, video you know, YouTube shows, I'll turn them on and just listen mm -hmm. to the the audio. Yeah. It's shaped a lot of the way I play where it'll be like, oh, late at night, I just want to keep listening to this podcast. Mm -hmm. I'll go back and play more Forza Horizon 3 instead of mm -hmm. continuing Telltale's yeah, Batman. Yeah, for sports sure. games, right, you, right. Can, yeah, you can do that too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. Or like I'm playing through Super Mario World right now uh, for the first time. And it's like, oh, this is just prime podcast material or iTunes use specifically, mm -hmm. just grinding it out again and again and again. I think I, think I would really sooner, sooner turn to just listening to my own music though than, than yeah. listening to a podcast personally. music you've made <laughs> yeah my own music <laughs> mm -hmm. buy my cd please start yeah. a band cds are still a thing right? but as far as mm -hmm. jose is saying like mm -hmm. what could the trend growing trend of silent gaming have on game audio design i mean every game designer sound designer is hoping you have headphones on you're really savoring that i don't think mm -hmm. they would ever factor in people are probably listening to podcasts so let's not yeah. worry so much about here or mix it differently like they're looking for the optimal experience all the time yeah yeah. Uh, Billy Cave says, hey, guys, I was wondering, when did you guys start having a new monthly joke for the lowest ranking review score in the scoring system of the magazine? <laughs> and who comes up with these? I've been a subscriber for over 10 years, and it's a part of the magazine that I'm always looking forward to. And I think it really exemplifies Game Informer's humor. Uh, read street comedy, he says, to a T. Uh, and also a quick shout out to Elise's most recent article in the top 50 issue on intimacy and sex in video games. Yeah. Media journalism at its best. Oh, oh there you go, Elise. That. That's, That's really congratulations. cool. Wow. Um, so yeah, for the review score, which is listed mm -hmm. every issue, there's always like 10 is outstanding, yada, 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 and it goes down. And then one, we change it out every month. How yeah. does that work, Ryan? Uh, that goes back to when we put that scale in the magazine. I think there was maybe two to three months where it ran just some default thing. And then we thought, 
this would be fun if we changed this. Mm -hmm. It's back when we were we had uh, sense so, of humors, right? Right. In the magazine, where every page is like some kind of joke. Uh, I miss those days. But uh, yeah, we just decided as we move forward, we just keep doing that because it's a, just a little throwaway thing. Most people don't even notice it. Um, but some of them are mean as hell, <laughs> like towards like certain games and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. always look at that. There's there's always a, a fun little joke there. And in terms of who comes up with them, it's kind of a collective thing. Yeah. It's usually the way I hear it. I don't really proof the magazine, but I'll hear people trying to proof that page. And they'll be like, we need a number one. Yep. And, and everyone just sits people around. People gather around. Yeah, yeah. And we think of what's so awful that has happened <laughs> recently. Yeah. But it's tough, too, because the magazine is on such a delay you yeah. don't want to do anything too recent or too that's, topical but more like a trending thing that's going to continue to trend like yeah. i remember i think it was like a lucky's tale and star fox came out the same issue and so our number one that month was just video game foxes I think. <laughs> it's just it's very <laughs> it's stupid dumped, yeah. i think we've had some people references in there yeah. okay so it's something to look forward to every it depends time. on our mood yeah it's I good so uh what do you guys like email of the week oh wow that's it, huh? Mm -hmm. I think the, the president question was probably the most creative. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. topical with it's what's true. going on in the world. We right. maybe talk the most about uh, what made you feel bad. Oh, the mean thing, yeah. Yeah, the mean thing. Mm -hmm. You want to go president instead? I wish we had better answers for I guess. President I one. guess in terms Cliffy of like, question and Cliffy B is the best answers, possible then. president. God. <laughs> Cliffy B Hayes. Oh, that would be amazing. I guess meanest thing is what you know spurred the most discussion. Uh, no, I'll go for the president one. It was creative. Reiner, president? You're the yeah, president. Yeah, I like that. It's, right it's okay. super timely. All right, there we go. Sherman from Florida. We're going to ship you out something real nice. Okay. All right, thank you so much, folks, for joining us. Uh, coming up next, we're going to get a little game trivia with Back of the Box, so stay right. tuned for that. And welcome back to the Game Informer Show. I'm still here. I'm now joined by JV Gwaltney. Hi, everyone. These are the real contenders. We've got Kyle Fierce Boy Hilliard. Uh, Kyle, Crash Man Kutu. That's right. And Jeff Cork, who lost his glasses last year and uh -huh. now lost his beard. Doing the, the head next. <laughs> we can only Duh. hope. Yep. The headless competitor, they'll call you. I've been experimenting with the elevator at work, <laughs> so we'll see. So what we're doing here, this is a back-of-the-box game true. We've played it a lot, but it's been a little while, so let's recap. At Game Informer? We have what we call the vault, which has theoretically every game ever made. It doesn't. I, well, it's pretty close, though, right? It's so a lot of games. I go in there with my phone, mm -hmm. iPhone 7, hot off the presses, and I look at the back of game boxes, and I take a picture of it, and then I read the description here, uh -huh. omitting keywords that would obviously give it away. Everybody competing is trying to get up to five points. Okay. JV, have you played this? No, this will be my first time. Oh I've been here God. every year. This will be my first time. Have you listened to it before? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know how to play. What's the the other rule? If 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 everyone else guesses, you gotta right. You can listen to the entire description then. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the rule is, you need to put your hands behind your head in a relaxing pose <laughs> and say the phrase. I could get used to this. Okay. And you buzz in by saying your name. You say your name. All right. You only All get right. one guess. Yes. No BS here. No. All okay. Right. And One that, guess, no BS. Now that Tim's gone, we can relax. We don't have to have anybody bragging about how they're undefeated, <laughs> which technically is not true. <laughs> technically and just overall just is factually. Clearly, yeah, exactly. <laughs> wildly untrue. Here's the thing, you guys. We've played Back of the Box so many times. We've scoured the vault. I wanted to hone in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just drill right in there. So we're going for one console. And for the one console to focus on, we chose clearly the best console, the PlayStation 2. Okay. So all of these are PlayStation 2 games. No PS2? shenanigans. Yeah, you only call it PS2? Yeah. They're are friends. You, are you a vertical boy or a horizontal lad? Vertical, because you could rotate the logo. It's fun, isn't it? It's really cool. All right, are you guys ready? Right, yes. Let's do this. Here are back of the game box descriptions for the PlayStation 2. <laughs> Don't uh, Can you breathe less? Deliver at all costs. As a member of a gang of international blank. It's your job to evade the U.S. Border Patrol, CIA, and cutthroat rivals. Jeff Cork. Jeff Cork. Smugglers Run. Jeff Cork out of the gate nice. with Smugglers wow. Run. Nice. Rockstar launch game. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Driving around the desert, right? It may have come up earlier in this podcast that you guys didn't listen to. So, uh, listeners, a little fun treat for you there. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Half man. Half demon. Pure. Vengeance. Legend tells of two millennia ago, in the darkest reaches of hell, a demon swordsman named Blank awoke 
to JV just Gwaltney. JV. Devil May Cry? Correct. But for the record, JV, uh, there isn't a JV Thompson standing next to you, so you can just say <laughs> JV. No, I'm going to say the full name. I know I, was, uh, I know. brand recognition is very important. I was you. actually waiting that one out in case you threw like uh, one of the sequels at us or something. Uh, like if it was a two Yeah, I was, I was trying to figure out, is it Devil May Cry or Devil May Cry 2? Uh, it's tough to know when to be a dick and go for sequels and when not to. Yeah. And just overall in your life, it's tough to know when <laughs> can you be a dick. Yeah. Ready? The fastest first-person shooter ever created for a gaming console. The blank are an evil race dwelling outside of blank and space. Rouse, Jeff, Jeff. Time Splitters 2. Incorrect. JV Gwaltney. JV. Time Splitters. Correct. JV takes it. I like the hand slap on the table. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to do that. No, I no, thought no. there was like a buzzer. There's no buzzer. No. The buzzer is your own mouth saying uh, your Oh, okay. Name. Uh, Jeff Cork, mm-hmm. I couldn't make eye contact with you because I knew I'd give it away with your <laughs> slow two delivery. Is that they say the fastest first person shooter? They say that. Yeah, Everyone I think I remember reading so that weird. on the box okay. when I bought That's it. That's exactly yeah. Jamie's cup of tea. Yeah. You so. see keyword search. What's the fastest shooter? No, <laughs> Time Splitters won. All right, are you guys ready? A fight so brutal, so evil, so deadly. Two powerful sorcerers, blank and blank have joined forces to achieve to achieve the supreme goal immortality will each survive their blank alliance experience the lethal intensity of an all new blank fighting system unleash your warriors three unique fighting styles including Kyle, hand- Kyle. Mortal Kombat Deadly Alliance there we go right. Kyle here we go oh man Jamie's at board. two Kyle's at one Cork's at one mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you guys ready yeah last time she saved the world this time it's personal that's the start mm-hmm. of every good description mm-hmm. JV JV is it Blood Rain 2 Incorrect, you pervert. Sorry. <laughs> Blank's, Blank's story continues in the first true sequel of Blank. New dangers threaten Blank. Familiar allies are at hand, and somewhere, somehow, a friend may still be alive. Enter an exciting mission based story with nonlinear gameplay. Experience dynamic combat. Change jobs in the heat Kyle. of battle. Kyle. Final Phase 10 2. There we go. God, I was dodging that one. I didn't want to say that <laughs> yeah. job word. Of course, what's happening, you say dude? Hmm? What's the matter with you? Do you remember the PlayStation 2? I'm just trying not to breathe into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> You're always talking about Final Fantasy 10 2, like all the time. Is that Can exciting musical good? number? Yeah. In the beginning? It's so good. In the war to save blank, what part will you play? Unparalleled film collaboration. Resulting in a true blank experience. Kyle. Kyle. The getaway. Incorrect. Damn it. Exclusive film footage from the creators yeah. of blank. Jeff. Jeff. Is it Enter the Matrix? I'll give that to you. The Matrix, colon, Enter the Matrix. But absolutely. <laughs> oh God. Well yeah, we're, we're sticklers here, Jamie. Yeah. We're perfectionists. All guns blazing. That's all we get? <laughs> <laughs> As a blank operative... You'll obey no laws, no no borders, kill without mercy, and live by the five rules of guncraft. Which <laughs> Jeff I, is Jeff. it black? Jeff, damn! Corn. Wow! Holy cow! All right, for extra points, what are those five rules of guncraft? Number one, handle. Number two, bullet. Three, <laughs> the silencer. And four, barrel. All right, and five, everybody knows is the trigger, the cartridge. Correct. <laughs> wow. Five rules of guncraft. Right? What? What? No, that can't be right. No, he got it. Here's, he got here's, it. here's what they actually list. Uh, number one, guns are the stars. <laughs> hey, baby, it's your time to shine, guns. Uh, number two, every bullet is your baby, which is a terrible Whoa. philosophy. Number three, okay. bigger guns, louder explosions. Number four, leave a trail of destruction. Number five, get creative with your kills. <laughs> You're pretty close, Corey. Go, 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 go. That's some good training material. <laughs> All right. Militaries around the world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, feed them babies. All right. What the hell is this game? Okay. I've got a baby in your belly. <laughs> <laughs> Having my bullet. <laughs> <laughs> the legends of fierce blank come alive. Plunge directly into battles as one of nine historically inspired 
devastatingly Ooh. fierce warriors battling on foot. Kyle. Kyle. Dynasty warriors. Six. Incorrect. Damn it. Join the ranks of heroes as heroes of old as you fight your way through hundreds of merciless warriors in your quest for the greatest prize of all. China. JV. JV. Dynasty Warriors 7. Incorrect. PSM says, hang on, Jeff Cork, we're missing something from you. Mm -hmm. Jeff Cork. You're not going to get this point. I could get used to this. <laughs> sure. I could use he, he, no, no, he doesn't get the point. He he stumbled over the phrase. No, no, no. Yeah, hey, hands have to stay up, buddy. Hands oh, where we can up. see him. Oh, Six roll of gun craft. Okay. All right. PSM <laughs> says, easily, easily one of the most technically impressive action games ever. Witness extraordinary graphics on battlefields of truly epic proportions. Over 1,000 combatants mm -hmm. per stage with more than 30 on screen at any given this, time. You're going to get more Also, out of this use your bow and arrows <laughs> to pick off distant em en enemies. See an enemy. Eminas. <laughs> this town needs so, an enemy. Good thing you have all the clues now. Yeah. I'm going to do like Price is Right style snipe. I'm going to say Dynasty Warriors. Mm. I can't remember if the. I'm just going to say it, Dynasty Warriors. Was it on PS1 oh. originally? Are you going to stop talking and submit that answer at some point? I'm going to submit that. $1. No, okay. Is it incorrect? Because Dynasty Warriors 1 was PS1. It right. was actually like a fighting game. Yeah, it was, it was a straight up fighting game. game. Yeah. Too. It's like it's between three and five, right? No, Dynasty Warriors 2 is the PlayStation 2 debut of the series, and that's what this is. Really? Yeah, that's why okay. they're talking about the tech. They're so amazed by it. It's Dynasty I thought Warriors 2 was a too. PlayStation game. I thought so. it was called Dynasty Warriors also. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. More Dynasty Warriors. Look who's Dynasty warriors in now. Uh, well, okay. There we go. We did it, you guys. Here we are. No one got that point. Solve the puzzles or join the Tormented Souls forever. Oh. JV, was that your name? No. <laughs> in your native tongue? <laughs> you freak. Sorry, that's me. <laughs> oh, what's that? I don't know. I love you, Jamie. Uh, within a world of enchantment and wonder, evil resides within an ancient castle. Resides. It does say resides. Oh, oh man. Resides. There oh. you go. <laughs> blank. Uh, a blank has been. Uh, Kyle. Kyle. Castlevania Lament of Innocence. Oh, incorrect. L ah. Lament? I thought I was giving this away too much. Embarking on a perilous quest to save himself as well as a beautiful princess, Blank must find a way to escape. However, escaping will be no easy task. Every towering staircase and stone block is a piece of a puzzle. Every open window, dangling chain, and razor-thin escape illuminates another mystery. JV and Cork have yet to buzz in. All right, here's here's the rest of it. Um, so within uh, this ancient castle, blank, a young boy has been expelled from his village and left within God damn it. this isolated <laughs> fortress. Uh, come on, JV. Come on, Cork. Can I get the Solve point? the puzzles or join the tormented souls the forever. Point? No. Five. Four. Three, two, one. You guys suck. You won't Come guess on. anything. It's Eco. I don't know. No. Oh, Eco. No, JV gets the point. God damn it. <laughs> Nobody gets the point. Come on, you guys. Eco. What's that? I guess we can't look at it. I, I wonder if that is the PS2 Castlevania that I was guessing, though. If I got the, Lamont. the subtitle right. Lament <laughs> of Innocence. Yeah, that's what I was trying to do was like the Castlevania subtitles going through them. I think them. it was Nocturne of Shadow was the <laughs> other one. I don't know. I could be wrong about that. I when, can't believe I'm really kicking myself for not getting that one. That's really, I'm disappointed in myself. When the blank accidentally destroys all the stars in the sky. Kyle. Kyle. Uh, Katamari Damacy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very ba, correct, Kyle. Ba, 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 ba. All right. Blank is a man with nothing to lose in the violent, cold urban night a fugitive undercover cop framed for murder oh uh jv oh uh jv yeah max Payne. <laughs> there we go max Payne won this is a hell of a match what three 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 oh geez oh can i get God. half a point for eco no no <laughs> no blank is back in the latest installment of the critically acclaimed series top secret weapons technology jv jv is it contract jack <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? I don't know. What thing. is Contract Jack? Isn't the No One Lives Forever sequel? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, That's my not God. A thing. I had no idea. Yeah, that is a thing. 
That's totally a thing. Top okay. secret weapons technology is being mysteriously transported under cover of an oil tanker to an unknown destination. Kyle. Kyle. Metal Gear Solid 2. Sons of Liberty. There we go, Kyle. Ah. I was waiting for the full name. Well right. done, dude. Cork, how you doing? Did you fall asleep? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Nap time. <laughs> All right. It's time to rip the galaxy a new one. Ugh. With over 36 weapons to choose from, it's no wonder blank have itchy trigger fingers. It's simple. Lots of enemies to shoot, lots of fun weapons, and you get to blow the S word up. JV? JV. Ratchet and Clank? Correct! Uh, that, was, that was mm-hmm. another one I was... Wow! Rip you a new one actually was all I needed, but I didn't... It was, again, I was waiting to see if there was a yeah. sequel hint or something. That's what I was waiting for as well. You guys should I, stop all, waiting. Jump in All there. the answers that I have not gotten, I, I did get in my mind. Is I get basically it. what I'm getting I get it. At. I get it. So, <laughs> this is this is a game point between JV and Kyle, each at four. Mm-hmm. Cork at three, but it's the three that's kind of like... You know, like when it places... Well done steak is more like a medium. This three is more like a one with the way you've been playing lately. <laughs> he got that one game. <laughs> cut the he's trying, No, he's trying to cut my mic. Hey, blank. Hey. <laughs> that's not what it says. Hey. That's how you get the consumer's attention when they're looking at the back of the boxes. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey, you asshole. Yeah, that's what I want on the back of the box. Please. Blank is back. <laughs> to begin. Blank is back. <laughs> to crush blank for good. By harnessing the destructive power of the four elements, blank creates crunch with one mission, demolish all that lies before him. (laughs) Will blank and blank be up to the challenge? You bet your blank they will. Is it you? Jeff. Is it Jack and Dexter? Dexter 2? Incorrect. (laughs) Davey. Is it Jack and Dexter? Incorrect. I could get used to this. You go, girl. For the first (laughs) time ever... Blank's tough as nails sister is fully playable. Positively eyeball popping. The most dazzling special effects ever seen in a blank game. The biggest adventure yet. 30 new action filled levels and jam packed environments. Multiple modes of vehicular mayhem control eight different vehicles uh, from a blank glider to a giant robot suit. Oh, man. You go, girl. A, a what? A, a robot suit? Is that what you said? <laughs> read this read it like I just No. You can't. Can you reread it or is that cheating? It's cheating. It's cheating. I don't know. I don't know. I think I've reread it. I've reread that eco one a million times. Yeah. By harnessing the destructive power of the four elements, blank creates crunch uh, with one mission to demolish all that lies before him. Will blank and blank be up to the challenge? You bet your blank they will. Oh, man. Biggest adventure yet. Multiple modes of vehicular mayhem. Eye popping. Best looking blank game. You go, girl. For the first time ever, play as blank. Wait, play as this character, who's this character's tough as nails sister. Mm -mm. Five. Pass. You can go and pass. I don't. I don't even have a guess. Really? Yeah, I can't think of like a. I'm guessing it's like a mascot platformer franchise, but I don't. With a female (laughs) character. All right. Come on. What is it? Crash Bandicoot Wrath of Cortex. Okay. First PS2 Crash Bandicoot game. You get to play as Coco. Yeah. Okay. But that was like. I wouldn't have gotten the full title anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's fine. Uh, this just says two words. Giant Blank's levels. back. <laughs> <laughs> you control blank. Fighting blank. No. Bring it. Center stage, colon, where ballers come to play. The ultimate Kyle? level boss, Kyle. NBA ballers? Incorrect. Uh-huh. The ultimate level boss, Michael Jordan. Hold court against street legends mm. five jeff four. is it nba street there we go jeff court so do you realize it, it wasn't volume is? two it, it was, was not volume okay. two all right this is amazing tie game everyone's at four this is game point jv you're aware that this is the only way you'll get that christmas bonus right <laughs> you have to do it oh my god this seems horrific they say the mind bends and twists in order to deal with the horrors of life. Sometimes the mind bends so much it snaps in two. Jeff, I'm going to go big. Jeff. Silent Hill 2. Incorrect. Mm. <laughs> Virtually every battleground element is interactive. 
from the creators of blank one and two articulated weapon delivery dramatic effects and creative kills that's the entire box that's it oh man virtually every battleground element is interactive from the creators of blank one and two articulated weapons deliver dramatic effects and creative kills it's a dvd rom yeah one to four players uh kyle kyle manhunt incorrect one to four Ooh. players come on all right kyle. oh okay i mean jv man five there's a four rule. skipping JV. three jv jv silent hill three Incorrect. Which doesn't have multiplayer. It, also, so. that, that, wouldn't have, that wouldn't have counted anyway because your hands weren't behind your head. Mm-hmm. Saying, oh, I guess, well. Worms 3. Was it Suffering? What was it? Twisted Metal Black. Uh, oh, yeah. I wouldn't right. have gotten that. Always sneaking Twisted Metal in these competition <laughs> shows. I never, Always. The word articulated never crossed my <laughs> yeah, mind while like, I played those games ever. <laughs> while you read David Jaffe's tweets. Um, bigger, better, faster. Take control of a lightning fast mechanized robot in blank. The most intense mech combat game ever. Fight an evil militaristic force in exotic locations, including huge free-roaming cityscapes, enemy fortresses, and even in the depths of of space. Depths of face. (laughs) With new weapons, mysterious characters, and an epic storyline that touches upon the themes of power, freedom, and love, Blank revolutionizes the genre of mech combat. Additional gameplay modes includes <laughs> two player versus extra missions and VR training. Oh, Unbelie- JV. JV. Zone of Enders. Incorrect. Execute grab maneuvers. Throw enemies into each other or use them as shields. Destroy up to 100 enemies on screen simultaneously with impressive laser weapons. Kyle. Kyle. Robotech? Incorrect. Damn. Unbelievable cinematic visuals combined. I could get used to this. Combined with anime cutscenes to reveal an epic storyline. Are you sure it's not Robotech? From the creative <laughs> team behind. <laughs> I should not say it, but it is a previous game that we've covered in this episode. Mm-hmm. Okay. I think I might. Know, I think I might know what it is. Maybe. Bigger, better, faster. <laughs> Uh, this, it's not Xeno Gears, is it? Incorrect. You should have been thinking of Xeno is Saga, it, but is it is it not. Uh, Zone yeah. of Enders 2? The Zone of Enders 2. Zone uh, of Enders God. Second runner. The God. bigger, better, faster was your clue, God. JV. Oh. You were so close. And Metal so Gear Solid mad. is the yeah. Metal Gear Solid 2. So mad. Right. cutscenes in that one? Yeah, okay. they totally did. Yeah. First one didn't, but second one did. Oh my gosh. Okay, you guys, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good Still sign. Still tied game. This is amazing. I do. I am enjoying this. Yeah. Kyle, are you happy? I'm, I think I am for once. Are you feeling joy? I, is that what this is? Confront your shadowy past and America's darkest corridors of power. Trust no one, not even yourself. <laughs> In this stylish conspiracy thriller, mixing fast action gunplay with cutthroat infiltration. A presidential assassination conspiracy plot enshrouds the future of America in mystery. Bang, it says. In big letters, <laughs> and it's showing a president's face. <laughs> JV, JV, is it thirteen? JV with thirteen. Oh man! Wow, that is a good victory. That's good. Court, one. give it up. Thirteen. That's good. Thirteen is good. That Didn't is a pretty deep cut. Recently? We did on the podcast okay, not yeah. that long ago. Yeah, JV. I was, I was trying to figure out is this Splinter Cell or thirteen? Ah, yeah. Did they? Did Splinter Cell come? Splinter the later Splinter Cells. Does it say anything about like okay. comic visuals or cell shade? It or? said stylish, didn't it? It's stylish. Yeah. Okay. As soon as you said bang, I knew. I was like, yep, stylish that's conspiracy 13. thriller. Okay. Yeah, look at yeah. that. Sure, the president. Yep. It's, it's yeah, very right, right. President Ross. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, are you guys ready just for some bonus extras? Yeah. The runoff? Yep. I yep. love these. Yep, yep. Cork, this is where you shine, baby. Yep. Why clone when you can morph? Morph into five strange creatures from a gorilla. Kyle. Kyle. Dr. Muto. No. You got it, dude. Yep. All right. Amazing. I don't I'm, believe that's I, a game title. What? Dr. Dr. Muto. Muto. Yeah. I would absolutely. excel in these bonus rounds. Why don't you put some of these up front? Uh-huh. Save <laughs> blank by car, by foot, by the seat of your pants. Blank's biggest driving hazards are let loose. Drive yourself crazy in lawless fender benders and chaotic head-on collisions as your favorite Blank's character. 
Unbuckle your seatbelt and set out on foot to investigate creepy crop circles and a <laughs> diabolical conspiracy threatening to, to obliterate blank. Drop that donut and grab a wheel. JV. JV. Simpsons hit and run. You got it, dude. There we go. I like how... Don't you want to get in some lawless fender benders? Doesn't that sound fun? <laughs> Just like the opening credits. <laughs> you guys ready? Yes. Yeah. This is the last one. Okay. Some mountains are scaled. Others... <laughs> Are slain. Shadow JV, Shadow of the Colossus. Old Shadow JV, Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> you got it, dude. Good job. You all did a really good job. JV. That was fun. Hail the Conquering here, you guys. First Undefeated. time on the game, I think. <laughs> Technically, yeah. yeah. Technically. You, you have as much validity in claiming that as Tim did. So <laughs> right. you can put it in your Twitter bio. You can write it in the sky with an airplane, whatever you want, man. All right, guys. That's it. Thanks for right, playing. We did it. Cool. Thanks that for having fun. us. We and should I'm, do that every week. I agree. Someone, uh, I, I apologize if you didn't own a PS2 and we're just completely <laughs> cut out of that. But plenty of them were kind of cross-platforming and whatnot. Uh, thank you so much. Be sure to tune in. Hey, Kyle. We have an exciting hey. podcast next week, right? Yes. Because uh, Switch stuff. Is that what you're looking at me for? That's right. Yeah. We'll know about Switch stuff. So yeah, we'll, we'll play the Switch. Switch it's yeah. super exciting. So yeah. tune in uh, to next week's show. It's going to be airing on Thursday. We'll talk all about going hands on with the Switch, which is going to be. What's it like to play Skyrim? I can't wait to hear. Uh, <laughs> just kidding. Uh, we don't. Love you. This is console launch period. This is exciting. Yeah. We're going to be optimist, Cork. We're not going to stand excited. for this. Mark. I'm legitimately excited. I am also very excited. But I'm thank with you, Cork. It's fine. Come it's on, good. You guys. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching or listening to this episode of the Game Former Show. Be sure to tune in next Thursday then for another regular episode. Bye, everybody.